Well, it's 12.30. Here we are. We're at Foundation Park. It's Swindon Town Women versus Portishead. Slightly overcast, Ellis, but there's no breeze. Nice sort of early spring day, best way to describe it. And um, all change at Swindon Town Women's Football Club, Ellis, isn't it? Because obviously yeah. last time we were here, a couple of weeks back, it was off the back of a 5-1 defeat on the county ground pitch. Um, Swindon Town um, going down to um, the Southampton Women or the Sirens, not not to be affiliated with the Premier League um, uh, Southampton, but we are, yeah, we're all changed. So um, James Lally, unfortunately, um, was uh, thanked for his time at the football club, um, as indeed was uh, Keelan, his assistant, and um, and the poor gentleman was shown the door, and then we find ourselves here at Foundation Park today, live with new manager. Um, who's going to be joining us in five minutes' time. We've got Mike Cook, former Gloucester City and former Chippenham Town men's manager who's made the transition over to uh, coach the women's game. I believe it's his first time coaching the women's game. Now, I don't know if you know much about Mike Ellis, but Mike is a coach of the coaches. So Mike works for the PFA, um, as well as obviously being the Swindon Town women's coach. And... um, yeah, he's a he's a proper like died in the wall football person. I think it's a really interesting appointment. Um, what do you think will be some of his biggest challenges, Ellis, transitioning into um, from men's football to women's football? Given some of the conversations we've had with the women's players to date. Yeah, well, I've I've certainly noticed as well, sort of, as in my sort of transition into women's football, watching women's football, um, the the whole style of play. Um, and just the whole, so the whole vibe really is is complete, is is very different to the men's game, um, and I think that will certainly be a, a huge factor. Um, you know, he can't come in with the same st- the, the the style of play that he probably had in the men's men's team might not work with these. Um, you know, also how how you how you communicate with your players. Again, will be will be very different. Um, so there are certain physical boundaries as well, aren't there? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know when he can come enter. Obviously, the changing spaces. Um, I guess you've got the physical challenges that Alice has talked about before. That, for example, I mean, Ali Colston, one of our sponsored athletes, and he's talked very openly and honestly about you know the battle that she had returning from pregnancy. Yeah. Um, Rian Bourne Hallett had the same sort of conversations, and no pregnancy, no return from pregnancy or rehab, if you want to call it that you know for if you want to call it that yeah um, because we're not talking about hamstring strain here are we no. like, you know but no no recovery from pregnancy or return to football from pregnancy rather is the same so again you've got you've got so many variables like yeah. it is you know but fundamentally it's i think the way alice put it it's the same game slightly different parameters 100 percent um the basics are there aren't they yeah so here we are, though. So this is our this is our debut, Ellis. We've obviously yeah. we've we've covered the game. I say our debut. I say our, our Foundation Park debut. Yeah. Keep getting ahead of myself with my <laughs> excitement. So we've covered the game before at the county ground. Um, we've had this is our I think this is our fourth fixture this year, commentary fixture yeah. for Swindon Town Women. I think it's our about our seventh or eighth commentary commentary fixture per se, if you include the men's team as well. Um, so, our, just to describe to the listeners, we've um, we've campaigned to be given the balcony of Foundation Park, but those dastardly rogues, unfortunately, can't make that happen for us. So, we are nicely nestled behind one of the goals. Um, just as you come along to Foundation Park today, if you're umming and arid, we are nicely nestled behind one of the goals. We've got our, ourselves a nice little table. We're all set up. The only downside is we're pitch level, which isn't ideal for commentary, but we're pitch level. And I tell you what, we're so close to the goal. I can touch it. So we are going to be absolute earache for the goalkeepers today. Um, but we've got um, we've got some wonderful personalities joining us. As I say, we've got Mike Cook joining us in the next five minutes. But joining us on COCOM shortly as well is Jen Gray. So Jen Gray, what a journey for Jen Gray, Ellis. What a journey for Jen yeah. Gray. So Jen's been associated with a football club for absolutely ages. Proper legendary figure. Very, very, very popular. She was out on the pitch with me yesterday uh, before the men's fixture. Um, against Barrow, gregarious is the best way to describe her. She's um, sort of wonderful, a uh, wonderful personality, but she's um, currently suspended. So she got sent off last week. Um, unfortunately, uh, um, a couple of tackles, two, two, um, two bookable offences, saw her get a red card um, last week. 
um, in the 4-0 reverse to top the table Exeter. Um, but unfortunately, the women's loss is our gain. So while she won't be out on Foundation Park, and I know she's kicking herself for a red card, but she's very, very much looking forward to enjoying our company out on the pitch. Who are you most looking forward to seeing today, Ellis? Who are you most looking forward to see out there? Um, Helena. Yeah. Um, Proper entertainer, isn't she? Yeah. And hopefully we might see a few fights from her as well. Yeah, she's, she's a bit fighty, yeah. Is, yeah. Well, speak, that's, 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 your, that's your, your inner boxer <laughs> coming out, isn't it, Ellis? Yeah, yeah. For those of you that are listening in that, that isn't aware, Ellis is one of Wiltshire's um, prime young boxing talent. So unsurprisingly, he likes <laughs> to see people throwing hands. Well, hopefully we won't have too much of that on the pitch. But no, so Helena Diaz Butcher leads the way this season um, with Swindon Town ladies on the assist front. Um, she's up in double figures in terms of assists. I think the thing that, um, like any any football fan that enjoys watching football at any standard will always enjoy a lightning quick winger that puts dangerous balls into the box and lanes his form um, down the right hand side this year and her link up play of Annie Colston has been absolutely electric hasn't it Um, certainly in the the Southampton game uh, when we were doing comms on that the the pairing of um, Colston and Diaz Butcher is you, you can see why you know, the assists are coming, the goals are coming because it works. Um, and, you know, I, I was shocked that, that there wasn't a goal there. Um, you know, any other day, that two goals, three goals from uh, Annie Colston, easily. Well, so that was the funny thing, wasn't it? You know, the, the Southampton fixture was just bizarre because you look on paper and, I mean, some might say it was the, the nature of that defeat, high-profile fixture at the county grounds, heavy scoreline. I think it'd be very, very easy for people to turn around and go, well, that must explain why James and, and Keelan are no longer, um, you know, leading team, first team affairs for the yeah. women's team. But that would be grossly unfair. I mean, we were, we were, we found it utterly bizarre that game, didn't we? Because the yeah. ladies had so much of the play, created so many chances. I mean, you know, Annie, Annie Colston came off the pitch post-match interview with us. She was kicking herself. She said she easily could have gobbled up two, three goals herself. You add that to the one they've already scored. And there's your 5-4 scoreline. And that's before we even get to sort of the chances for... I mean, Lane's had another great chance. Um, so we, we threatened. We threatened the Southampton goal. But then by the same token, Southampton also hit the woodwork on a couple of occasions. Yeah. Emily's made a couple of great saves. It was a, just one of those games. 100%. Um, Not one for the defensive purists. No, no. Um, Annie Colston had... A wonderful opportunity. I think within like the first sort of half an hour, um, she she finishes that that um, opportunity, and it's a, it's a totally different game. Um, yeah, uh, you, you can see why both teams are sort of higher up on, on, on in in the table. Well, we were expecting, we haven't got a team lineup yet, but we're expecting something similar um, to what we've had in the last couple of weeks. So um, expect to see Emily McGrogan in goal. Expect to see um, Alice Bowden captain the side today. We've not seen her around yet, but we have seen a few of the girls as, they, as, as they've been arriving. Um, we're fully expecting to see, um, yeah, Lanes and Annie. We're expecting to see Meg Attenborough in midfield. Jen Gray's obviously suspended, as I say. She will be joining us on the mic. Um, Lucy Durham has been in and out the side recently, but we're expecting to see Lucy be involved in some way, shape or form. Um, the vastly experienced Tory Taylor, again out on the pitch with me yesterday before the men's game against Barrow. We're expecting to see Tory. Um, vastly experienced Rianne Bourne Hallett, recently returned from, um, from uh, having a child. Um, and her fitness has been improving at a rate of not so superhuman yeah, she return. Was phenomenal from Rianne. The Southampton game. She put, did she play full 90 minutes? Uh, almost, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Uh, I we we spoke at half time, didn't we? We thought she was going to be taken off. Yeah, um, yeah, she was a, a a massive, big player in that game. Well, when you consider, I mean, it was literally two, three months prior, Ellis. We mm. were sat in the commentary box with her, and she was literally nursing a baby. Yeah, and w- I mean, we remarked on the commentary that we simply could not believe that there she was, like out on the pitch, like bombing around, yeah. having made such an incredible. And don't get me wrong, we know she wasn't ill. Yeah, and we, we, we're not, so we're not, we're not being rude here, but. To make that return from, I and mean, we said to her, you know, we interviewed Rian post match, and we said to her, like, well, that's just phenomenal. We can't believe like the recovery that she's made. And even she said, um, 
that um, yeah, I think she surprised herself for the amount of minutes yeah. that she managed. But um, I'll tell you, I'm really looking forward to see today. We don't know if she's going to be starting, um, uh, or, but um, Emerson Evans really impressed yeah. against Southampton. So Emerson scored a lot of goals for Melsham last season. James Lally had been keeping tabs on her from a development squad point, point of view in his private pre- prior role. Emerson's broken into the first team and she's actually made chances for a big name signing Charlie Rowland's kind of a little bit few and far between. So Charlie signed from Forest Green Rovers where she scored a lot of goals, but it's the form of Emerson Evans, which has really pretty much kept Charlie Rowland's on the bench of late. So Emerson Evans to sort of describe her, she, um, for, for, um, for the men's team enthusiast, Emerson Evans, think Jerry Yates, um, very rangy, um, can play down the middle, but also equally comfortable playing out wide. Again, lightning quick. And I think the thing that really excites me about Emerson is if you've got Emerson playing in a front three with Annie at the tip of the spear and Lanes and Emerson either side, you, I mean, pace in football, Ellis, as I said yeah. before, is, is such a valuable um, commodity. Um, they provide superb support, but it, at the same time, it's critical that um, Emerson learns to, because Emerson's instincts are obviously to get shots off. So if she's going to use her pace to open up opportunities, she's got to get the ball into the box mm. as well for Annie from the other side. Tell you what, you crack that, you get crosses coming in left and right. I mean, you know, Annie, who's got, I think it's 27 goals this season in all competitions, in 20, 23 appearances. I mean, that's, that's manna from heaven for a number nine, isn't it? Having that yeah. sort of supply line. Yeah, that's it. A, a, a defender's nightmare. Like, like you said, pace is... is uh... <laughs> A, a, a massive, uh, you know, scare for defenders. Um, so yeah, you, you've got that from both both sides, and yeah, it's it's not going to be a, a fun day for the defenders. No, so um, we we're expecting again in amongst the squad, and we will be confirming as soon as we've got team lineups. But we will be expecting also to be seeing Charlie Rowlands, Nat Goodright, who was with us yesterday in the stadium, um, Ella Harry's cat back, and Mia Mugford. And Mia has been here yeah. uh, pre-game, and we know we're going to have Mike Cook joining us shortly. He's lurking around behind us. Ellis, he's a very very popular and in-demand man at the moment. There are a lot of pulls on his time, but um. I go back to what I was saying earlier. Like this, this is a this is a brave step yeah. for Mike Cook. A brave step because fair to say, like the you know the Chipman move didn't really work out for him. He had a decent enough record at Gloucester, but to make the transition into the men's game, especially joining off the back of the departure of two very popular figures in James Lally um, and um, Keelan Paniyatu, yeah, it's it's a I wouldn't call it a gamble, but it's it's not a. Um, it's a brave choice, would be the, would be yeah. what I would say. Ellis. How yeah. do you feel about that? Yeah, um, you know, I looking at his history, I, I I would not have predicted that he he would come here. Uh, there's plenty of local teams around um, at quite a decent standard that he could easily have gone to, um, but I think it shows. I'm very well, Mike. Come and join us. All Come right. and join us. So we're live, Mike. We're live. We live? Jen, we're live as well. Jen's joining us. Have we got to be on this side? No, no, no. You can be wherever you like, Mike. Grab yourself a seat. Make yourselves comfortable. Make yourselves comfortable. Um, this is how flexible we are as a show. So, Jen, better late than never. Don't worry. You didn't tell me you were starting. No, no, no. Well, you know, listen, oh, it's, it's, not, it's not important. I was chit chatting away, you know. No, that's fine. That's fine. We're better, hobnobbing. Better late than never on her tackles from last week as well when she got sent off. <laughs> yeah, we're, we've just. Five, five seconds and we've already brought it Jen, up. We, well, we've already brought it up on air oh, three, no. four times Sorry. before you've even spoken. Mike, welcome to Swindon Town. How's it feel? Great. Really yeah, great. Really, really pleased to be here. Um, I've absolutely loved the first couple of weeks. Been great working with players again because uh, normally I work with coaches in my mm -hmm. day job. So to get that, um, you know, there's a rhyme and a reason for me getting up e each day and getting into training. And I think that um, the girls so far have all, all bought into it, haven't they, Jen? They've been really, yeah. really good, committed. And it's been a real pleasure actually to coach them. And what a time to join the women's team as well. I mean, I was lucky enough to be with the bulk of the squad out on the pitch before the men's game yesterday. And whilst that's not necessarily a performance environment for, for the women, it was pretty much like a PR exercise in many respects. It's lovely for me to be able to take them out on the pitch and present them to the fans. But it's it was an indication of the level of importance that the club are placing now on the women's football team moving forward. You know, here we are today. We're going to be playing at Foundation Park, a state-of-the-art facility. We've had three games over the way there at the county ground. 
very exciting time to be associated with a women's football team, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I think that anything that, um, you know, the male first team game can help us out with, i.e. yesterday, you know, just publicising the girls and what we're doing results-wise and fixtures coming up, um, training, you know, and everything um, geared to what will be next season now. We've only got three weeks left, three games and um, it's very exciting times for everybody. So, um, I, you know, I think the club as well, the, the brief conversations that I've had with Clem and Rob and Mandy, they're very excited about, you know, the, the next few years coming up. So we, we want girls to be part of that, that, you know, first and foremost can play in that tier four to get us up into tier three. And then if we can, you know, accumulate a few more players after that and then, Really, once you start getting near that championship, it's it's big time for mm. the girls. Mm. And we, so we talk about exciting opportunities, um, like playing in these wonderful facilities and and the the level, the increase of importance. But your appointment, Mike's really important for these women as well because you've gone, you're, you're we've gone from a setup where the previous coaches were volunteers essentially to you being on the payroll. And I don't yeah. be trained any confidence in saying that you're yeah. a, you're a, you're a professional appointment for this football club. Yeah, and. Um... You know that that shows a lot of good faith in me as well. They're they're prepared to take a, a bit of a gamble because I've probably got 40 years experience in the male game. I've got round about sort of 10, 11 years experience in the female game. Um, obviously, I haven't managed at this level, so I'm I'm still sort of finding my feet. I've I've probably watched um, 18, 19 tier three games because my daughter plays for Cheltenham Town, so I've watched m- most of that this season. But, um, yeah, I think, you know, it's, it, it was lovely to, to even be offered to do something. And, uh, you know, I feel very privileged to be at such a massive club like this and, and maybe at the forefront of something special. So what what are your... So I, don't, you, I know you're not going to want to give away too much in terms of your plans heading into the new season, Mike, but what are your kind of priorities? As you've got to know the, this, this team, uh, this group of women, uh, the facilities that you've got at your disposal, what, what's your thoughts heading into the new season? What will, you, what will be your biggest challenges? What are the early wins for you, do you think? I think the, the, the biggest challenges for me is that we've passed the transfer deadline window for the, for the girls, so we're not allowed to bring anybody in. But the flip side of that, that's great for me then to have a look uh, at the players that we've got as with any management job there is definitely going to be uh, some recruitment to get to get better standard of, of players through the door and you know we're just hoping that we can hold on to you know a lot that have been here over the last couple of years if if we feel that you know root and canal work needs to be done then that's what i'll do but at the moment the first sort of couple of weeks with four training sessions and one game under my belt, then uh, you'd like to think there would be a good proportion of the girls staying for next year. Mm. I mean, we listen, we've we've been on a journey with the women's football team right this year. So we've started the season. If you told me that by the end of the season, the Sir Tom Broadbent Lounge would have this wonderful love affair with Swindon Women's Football Club, I would have said to you, really? Like, I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. And, and that's mainly down to my own ignorance, to be totally frank. And it's only when you start reaching out and asking questions and getting to know personalities that our plans have all unfolded. And it's been a wonderful journey for us as an entity. Um, but I think the really interesting sort of journey that we've got going on with you guys sort of with a with an eye on next season is going to be, again, it's, everything is about growth. But I guess growth really is going to come for this football club, like with you know, getting more fans around the table, a bit like today. Like we've, We've played a we've played a big role in swelling the online sort of audience interest, and and we've noticed that there's been an uptake in fans coming in stadiums watching games. But I mean, to, if, if you're a fan and you're sitting here today listening to you, Mike, or, or sorry, or phrase it another way, if you're a fan and you're listening to this, Mike, what would you want to say to supporters, Swindon Town supporters per se? I think we've got a great opportunity to embrace the the women's side of the game, not just through having uh, different supporters walk through the door and obviously everything that that brings with, uh, you know, the financial benefits, but also supporting uh, two, three, four teams, you know, included with the the boys' academy set up as well, which is fantastic, by the way. Um, so it, I think for us, it's it's to make people aware is that we, we've got another avenue for you to support, and we we really really want it to be successful, but we can't do it on our own. We we need those supporters, and we need 
um, we need that person coming through the door that is either going to be a player, supporter, a coach, a member of staff, a helper, a volunteer, whatever it's going to be. Because without everybody chipping in, we're, we're not going to be successful. So, uh, yeah, we, we need help, really. So what would be your aspirations today, Mike? How many fans would you like to see around? I mean, I think the previous record foundation part, Jen, 250-odd. Yeah, what about that? How, 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 many, how many do you think we'd like to get around the pitch today, guys, if we, if we, if we put a pin in the map? What do you think? After, after yesterday, you know, being out there. Getting you got a taste of it, fans, Jen, didn't you? Yeah, 8,000 people was nice. Like, it would be good to see more than... 250 and lovely to see 300 people here but yeah yeah i think i mean that's kind of where my head's at mike at the end there i guess anything that's bigger than the previous site like, just keep edging that nudging it up right yeah. further and further but are your ambitions lofty uh, no they're not they're a bit more realistic <laughs> I, think that, um, I think we got 100 fans at fairford last week yeah which we? is massive for fairford yeah which is great and I, i've been at fairford before when we probably had 25 30 mm-hmm. people watching so again any growth on that is is great um i think with with all things we're going to need to be successful to get the gates up and get people through the door. We need to be entertaining. We need to, um, as much as I want to play football, uh, playing on Fairford last week was a bit bumpy, wasn't it? And it was it was difficult. It'd be difficult for Lionel Messi and Ronaldo, if I'm if I'm honest. So to get on an Astro turf, we're, we're looking to play a little bit more today. Um, but also be realistic. I'm not. I'm not a coach where we want to play 57 passes and score a goal. You know, if it's on to be direct and we can do it in one pass and get in behind defence, then I think that's what the crowd love. You know, and they'll 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 respect that as well. And it's they want to see good entertaining football with lots of goals scored and hopefully you know win a few games. And I know it's not a final question for you, Mike. It's not. I know it's not necessarily your say, but. Would it be fair to assume that you would like to make this your kind of permanent home? Like, certainly in the shadow of the county ground, I think from fans' perspective, it's one of the reasons I think I've really fallen in love with this group of individuals at this football club is that I've been able to come and watch them on the estate here, on the county ground estate. I think it's critical. Would you agree with that? Is that- yeah, I think so. And, um, you know, we've got a lovely little balance next season. I think we've got five games at the county ground and then we've got six games here at the moment. Um, that's a big proportion of your home games guys isn't it and it's going to make a difference you know if I'm recruiting players and we can say to those players look we've got got five games on the county ground you know what a fantastic um, thing that is to go for as a player and bearing in mind you know a lot of the female players have just played on park pitches you know and it's um, you know one man and their dog's been watching so to, to all of a sudden get on the county ground and you've got I don't know 500 to 1000 people watching you then that's fantastic. That's what we want, isn't it, Jan? <laughs> yeah, even a lot of the sort of championship Super League teams don't get that many home games on their first team's pitch. Mm. So to have five on the county ground is massive. Yeah, and and as I said, you guys clearly have got that kind of playing the management view of it. Myself and Ellis, from a fan's perspective, I can, I'm can. i not just being polite because we're sat here and like we're not being paid to do this, guys, let's remember. I had a conversation earlier got some Swindon fans that are listening today that are going to absolutely lynch me for what I'm about to say but I genuinely am here in Swindon this weekend because of this fixture not because of the men's fixture hand on heart we the conversation my daughter and I had was oh actually it's a double header we were really excited to come down and do the commentary with you guys today at Foundation Park and actually the men's game yesterday it was a dead rubber it was a little bit obviously I've got my on pitch duties that I had to do before the game but it was a bit like, oh, I was a little bit arm up my back, to be honest with you, at the moment. Whereas I'm really excited to come and watch your game today. Um, we've got lots of skin in the game. And I say that absolutely sincerely. So it's exciting times. But I've just got to stress, like, as a fan, I think I've said this to Clem, it's so important that we watch you guys, that we come here to this place. I yeah. Last week, my kind of, I was in a filthy mood. Last week, week four last, last week. Yeah. I was in a filthy mood. Off the back of um, uh, off the back of town's performances, we walked into the county ground ready to watch you guys play, and my mood just totally lifted. And I said this to Rob on air. Rob Angus and I were sat in the director's box, and I said to him live on air, "I said like, that's that's got that's something you can cash in on, right? Something you can cash in on." Yeah, and I think you know if we've got games at Fairford Football Club, who, who we are really appreciative of them for allowing us to do that as well. Um, you. You know, people are not going to make that effort to travel up the road half an hour and 40 minutes. So to, to have something on your doorstep and, you know, uh, watching 
uh, young players and young supporters come through that door, surely that's what it's all about. Got to be, right? Got to be. Community club, right at the heart of his community. Mike, we wish you all the best. Brilliant. Great. Best of luck, buddy. I'm going to go off and do the team talk now. We're so, going to very much enjoy yeah. watching today and providing full match commentary, Mike, of your um, of your wonderful lineup. We've got team team lineups due shortly, aren't they? Yes, they are. Super. Oh, all right, super. Thanks, thanks, thanks Mike. Yeah. Take good care. Wow, Jen, that's um, he's an impressive guy, isn't he? He is. Very, yeah. very impressive yeah. guy. You, you definitely notice the change um, with Mike coming in. Sort of at training, everyone's trying to impress. So, mm. sort of calibre of training has just gone up because everyone wants to sort of be in that starting eleven, still yep. be in the squad next season. You know, everyone's fighting, and it's yeah, it's really good to see. Well, there's almost like Ellis. There's so much stuff that we can like sink our teeth into. Jen, you're going to find me a, a terrible hand to hand trait. I start talking, I get well ahead of myself in a sentence, so I have to backtrack <laughs> over because I'm so there's so many things we can enthuse about today. I think the the really exciting sort of aspect of today is just contemplating your squad, all the characters you're talking about, being in that position where I can imagine it's like, as, as you've said to me before, as this season's unfolded and you've got opportunities to play games in there, the idea that you might not be part of that moving forward, yeah. you don't need any more motivation, do you, to bust your ass in training? You yeah. don't want to lose that, do you? Uh, absolutely not. I think not a single one of the girls isn't fighting right now to be here because everyone... It's just sort of getting behind it. Everyone wants to be here. Everyone wants to do this for Swindon. Uh, and just getting the support from the club really allows us to do that. So it's amazing. Mm. I'll I tell you what really excited me yesterday as well was getting a, a feel for what it means to you guys as well, wearing the shirt, wearing the badge. Um, the, the wonderfully socially awkward Nat Goodright, who hopefully will be <laughs> out there today, was a prime example of that. Nat's a season ticket holder, has been for many years watching the men's football team. But she was expre expressing in front of all these fans how it feels to her like to not only to, to sit there and watch watch her heroes out on the pitch but now she's got this wonderful opportunity to actually wear the shirt herself yeah. and play in front of the same supporters yeah. like what a, i mean what an opportunity and you you feel that that runs throughout the squad i mean i i, I took a bunch of you in the town in with me yeah, yeah. and your faces were just you were totally lit up and I was, it was lovely seeing you all get pats on the back and the lovely reception you got going around the pitch what did that feel like yesterday honestly it, it was brilliant i couldn't ask for a better reception um sort of when you said i'll oh, go do a lap of honor we all sort of gave each other a little awkward look how's how's this gonna go are people even gonna acknowledge that we're walking past them um but yeah we we got sort of great reception from all the fans and it was amazing even the boys sort of gave us a little clap as we walked past them as well while they were warming up but yeah I was I mean I was saying to you yesterday I came to the county ground on a tour with my village football club when I was about eight years old mm -hmm. um, and was sort of taken into the back back ends we looked at the gym we saw sort of all the facilities and then sort of 20 20 years on and I'm sort of playing at that stadium training in that gym that I went and had a tour around. It's, it's amazing. Mm. Um, and many of the other girls sort of feel the same, I think. And the pitch is incredible, isn't it? I mean, Marcus Cassidy, yeah. groundsman at Swindon Town, does such an incredible job with that facility. Um, when you're out there, you're pinging the ball about. Again, you just talked about Fairford and it's, you know, I don't I don't want to be disparaging because no, they, no, no. they've made such an effort to support the women's football club. But it, you cannot compare with a professionally prepared, you know, unfortunately, League Two pitch. But we know that pitch is well below its level of you know, level of quality, what they're no, sort of playing quality. Yeah. What, yeah. What's, what, how do you find the difference? Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. You have to completely sort of change your style of play when you're playing on different pitches as well. At Fairfield, you've always got to be prepared for that bubble, that bounce, you know. Uh, so you've you, got to have the extra touch. Yeah, your legs are heavier. You're sort of trancing through the muds. But uh, here, it's, 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 it's almost like sort of playing on your 3G or anything like that because it is just flawless mm. you know the ball runs so smoothly um that you know what you're going to get and it's yeah the difference is incredible you're allowed to play football more on there how difficult is it for for you though jen because i've i've got a theory that one of the things that's holding swindon town men's team back and keeping us down in league two is every time we play an opposition side it's like a cup final to them you know unless you're playing a bradford who are used to playing in front of 20 odd thousand plus supporters because, you know, their price points on their tickets are very different. They have, much diff they have a different dynamic with their supporter. Um, you know, the games that we've seen here, your last couple of fixtures, it's fair to say, haven't gone great in terms of score lines. No. Did you get a sense of your opposition come and play it like a cup final? Is that like 
is, is there an added pressure? Is it, mentally, is that difficult for you? Yeah, I mean, I think Southampton came out sort of way more ready for the game. Um, they just came at us. Um, I don't, I don't think they sort of did anything special, but we just couldn't handle it. And again, last week against Exeter, I think we went out with with just as much desire to win that game, but we were let down by small things like set pieces. Um, we, we just couldn't defend the set pieces well last week, mm. um, which is what let us down. But, you know, this is things that we, we're going to work on with Cookie and hopefully go into next season with that desire to sort of win every game. Mm. Um, you know, as, as you all know, it's been a sort of a, a transition period at the club um, for all of us. So, you know, we just need to settle back down and sort of get into it. It's not like, again, like I, pick, I try and pick my language really carefully, Jen, but I, I know, oh, I like to think you know I'm not being insulting when no, I say no, this, no, but good. you've literally gone from almost like being park footballers to within the space of 18 months playing on a league, playing in a league two. Well, that is not a league two stadium. No, that no. stadium has graced the Premier yeah, League. Yeah. Like, but again, like mentally, that. I can't begin to imagine how that must feel to you guys as a step up. But again, it's kind of crucial that you you play the game and you don't play the occasion yeah, and yeah. things like this. Yes. But you sort of sense last week. I mean, Sam, we we watched with great interest as we did our pre match build up. You know, the Southampton sirens were literally all running up in the stands and posing as though they were on holiday. Yeah, and you were like, you know, like this is literally like you were what you, you know you 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 can't escape the fact that. Like I said, we've gone from the from the park to the pros almost, yeah. and that the club's on that really steep learning curve. I mean, that that must be such a challenge for you. Yeah, I mean, yes, I know. For the most part, some of the girls have actually been in the position where they have been playing in sort of big grounds, big fans. All right, so talk to me about bench, that. But... Has it when you've got faces like that in the dressing room? What sort of messaging are they giving to the rest of the girls to sort of try and get, try and level that sentiment out? You know, you've got your Bowds, you've got your Tory, they've been there, they've done stuff and it's it's this is just another game girls. They try to keep everyone level headed in terms of yes, we're playing on a fantastic pitch in front of hundreds more people than we're used to but we've got to go out there and play our normal game mm. don't get too excited don't let it get to your head let's go out and try and play football mm. um and obviously you know some of the younger ones come in they they haven't had this before they've never sort of played to these crowds and this kind of st- stadium um and that is difficult you know but moving forward it's something that we're gonna get used to Hopefully. Well, Jen, I'm guessing if you are like an Emerson Evans, you're not going to know any different, are you? So this this is yeah. the thing. Emerson, Emerson's yeah. come from Melksham through the development ranks and then she's kind of in yeah, halfway yeah, yeah. up this steep yeah. development curve. So, and for her, and she's a really precocious talent. Amazing, I'm guessing yeah. the challenge is, am I right in thinking the challenge is probably harder if you've been associated with the club longer and maybe not played at the top end of the women's game where yes. you, you suddenly are... You know, you're kind of playing for the love of the game where you've been paying almost like paying your subs like a park footballer. And now suddenly, yeah, yeah. hang on, I've got all these expectations on fitness, on availability. on I mean, that's a big challenge. It is. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, the girls have got all of their outside lives as well. You know, Everyone, mm. everyone's got their full time jobs. Many have kids. You know, they, there's, there's all this responsibility to then sort of go into sort of the next step up where it's like, right, we want to be a sort of professional setup. So we've got to act like that. Yep. Um, and it is going to be a challenge for some people. Um, but, you know, that that's where we'll see what happens next season. Those that want to put that level of commitment in and those that don't. Uh, and unfortunately, the way that the club's moving, you've either got to get on board or get out, really. Oh, yeah, right. Unfortunately, to be that cutthroat, that's what Cookie wants to do. Um, so we have to sort of... And that's what we want. That's yeah. what we want. We wanted more support from the club. We wanted to progress. We want to move forward. So if we have to put in the extra commitment, then that's what we've got to do. Yeah, you know? it's professional behaviours, isn't yeah. it, we're talking about. And and it is hard because I'm guessing you are asking people to make, you know, real commitments in yeah. those in their personal lives. But, yeah, like you say, it's, it's in, at the same time, the rewards are huge, aren't they? Because yeah, massive. If, I... if you impress, I mean, let's say, you know, you take, it's easy to mention Annie with all of her goals this yeah. season. Yeah, She's yeah. not been the only success story, but I'm sure there are, like, you know, prying eyes. And he's, what, 26 goals in all competitions this year? Yeah, yeah. You can't put a price on goal scoring. No. And I'm sure there are there are teams at the very, very top level casting their eyes at her. I, d- I definitely know she's had had a couple of phone calls sort of come in from other places. But, yeah, right. you know, 
fortunately, so far, nothing's turned her head. You know, yeah. she's she's part of this club, but, and I know she wants to be. But you can go from Annie's position yeah. to suddenly be earning a living out of football. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's not that it's, far away, is it? No, no, it, it, it is fantastic. And, you know, some some of the girls, I think, the ones that are sort of, we've got the different level. You've got your Emerson Evans, who are 17, 18 years old. They're never going to know anything different in terms of women, women's football, which I think is unbelievable. You know, they're, they're being able to come in at 17, 18 years old to a club like this, and this is all they've known. It just shows the difference of where women's football has gone in the last sort of 15 years. Whereas you've got your your Tory, your, your bows, as I said, I always, sorry girls, I know, know you don't want to be baited out for being the older players myself, um, who when we came up to women's football, playing the same, we were playing in the same league, we were playing in sort of the same league, tier four, and we were playing at High West Town Football Club, Shrivenham, you know, training once a week, paying everything to, to play, you know, subs, Please. Travel, travel, everything was paid. Jen, we were gobsmacked when we had. Again, this is the level of our knowledge. When we first met Lanes and Annie, yeah. before we had any involvement with the women's football team at all, what I mean, Ellis, you were there that yeah. night. What really sucked us in was we we could not believe that you guys were paying for your own travel. We couldn't believe you were paying like match fees. We couldn't believe you paid paying for kit and and then we, and that was. And I think it was we had a very lazy conversation there, didn't yeah. we, about sponsorship. So, oh, yeah, we have to find ourselves sponsors and stuff. But there was no, like, it yeah. wasn't even like the girls were trying to sell themselves to us in that no. respect. <laughs> we were like, well, of course we'll sponsor you. And I was like, well, look, I mean, there, there's a lot of Swindon Town supporters out there. I think if they know the story and understand the journey you guys are on, we'll want to get behind you. But, I mean, as we're saying with Mike, I think it's, it's critical that the football's being played on this estate. I, I mean, agree. what would you do, Jed? If, if, if the if the purse strings were yours, yeah. no, would you God. would you want <laughs> Foundation Park developed bespoke for you guys to play on? As in, um, realistically, Foundation Park, I think, as an arena is something that yeah. you would expect to have supporters all the way yeah. around the pitch, all roaring you on. Or would you want to be in the county ground with maybe one or one or maybe a little further down the line, two stands open? What would you prefer? I think my my personal preference, and this is personal preference, I'm yep. not speaking for all the girls because because I know many of their opinion would be different. Mm-hmm. But for me, I think the atmosphere feels different when it's crowded, you know, when when it's packed, when it, when every seat is taken. And I, for me, that that pushes towards Foundation Park being yep. more of a sort of arena. Well, no different um, to Chelsea owning Kingstonian for the women's team. Exactly, you know? you know. Being able to have maybe 500 capacity to, to 1,000, if we could fill that within the next two seasons, amazing. To the point where we actually get too many people to come here mm-hmm. that then we're like okay we'll look at tra- transferring somewhere bigger but yeah. for me like the best atmosphere that we've had at games this season has been probably Larkall at home and Bournemouth at home and they were both played at Foundation Park with busy sort of crowds yeah. um, and then along with that was, was the Pool Town game at, at the County Round because we publicised publicized that massively FA Cup game had I think it was 800 mm-hmm. people there, yeah, yeah. if I remember correctly. Yep. Um, and honestly, that that sound when when a goal when the first goal was scored and you just heard the sound, there was only 800 people in there, but it, it was unbelievable. I've never sort of played with a sound like that before from a goal. So yeah, for me, it would probably be Foundation Park packed out because um, that just creates a, a, a better buzz and a better atmosphere. Um, but obviously. The end mission would always be to be at the county grounds. So here's a question for you. So I was talking to talking to Rob Angus last week about developments that are going on. You know the 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 club's hunger to have you guys out on the county yeah. ground pitch more and whatnot. Uh, or whatnot? There's a whatnot. Um, <laughs> how many whatnot? Are you doing whatnot count today? You what, on whatnot I, count? I think I, I maybe. Can, I, can I think do. that might be the first one of the day. Whatnot, yeah. Please count the whatnot. Um, so. Rob was saying that one of the one of the issues that you've got is the pitch during the kind of winter months doesn't recover as well yeah. as it does obviously during the spring and the summer obviously. Yeah. But then he said something to me which was really interesting that I hadn't actually thought about, and he said that apparently the damage to the pitch when the women's play women's team play on it is much lighter than when the men play on it because typically the physiology of the women's team is a lot lighter. The pounding on the pitch is a lot lighter, yeah. um, so it's 
it's sort of less of a concern. And then Annie, I then started thinking about something Annie said to me a few months ago, because I said to Annie, you must love it out there. And Annie kind of suggested she prefers it on Foundation Park. And she said she really likes the 3G. And that then got me thinking about, like, obviously men's football, again, thinking about the heavy pounding, you know, injuries on joints yeah. and things like that. Is the physiology of the women's game, do you think, does it make women's football on AstroTurf less of a risk to men's football on AstroTurf because of high impacts on things like joints, knees, ankles, do you feel? Because I've never heard a footballer turn I mean, around and go, give me the choice, I'd yeah. have the 3G. But Annie was I mean, really I, clear. I'm actually the, the opposite of Annie. Oh, yeah. As, as a centre-back, I'm going grass every day. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm, la- if I'm last ma- if I'm a last-ditch tackle and I've got to slide in, Doing it on 3G, yeah, right. I'm getting a burn from ankle to thigh, you know, mm. and I'd rather be on grass any day of the week. Um, in terms of physiology, she needs I... to get herself some, some know, tights, yeah, doesn't yeah. she? She needs yeah. to get a pair of John Barnes, <laughs> that's what she needs to do. In terms of physiology, I'm, I, haven't, I haven't really heard that before either, but just something that occurred to me, Jen, to be honest. I, know I don't that... know, I'm not trying to lead the way, yeah, but it's I mean, just I know, I know that women's players do tend to suffer heavier from things like ACL injuries. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's sort of like the physical sort of build up shape of the body yeah, know, right. rather than rather than the, the sort of pitch you're playing on. So I yeah. haven't actually thought about it that way before, Hannah's. Yeah, it, it could, don't get me wrong. It could just be an absolute load of nonsense. <laughs> it could be an absolute load of nonsense. But it's just something that, you know, just occurred to me. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, actually, if... Um, if the physical loading, um, you know, is more to, more like it, may, it means it's less of a risk. Then actually, I can see why I can see why everybody has a, has a wonderful, wonderful Swindon Town Women's Football Club. Hello, team. Go get them, past. rascals. As they, as, it's my captain. I'm going to be in your ear, McGrogan. Don't you worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with, with with Mike Cook coming in, we've had some new sort of. Nicknames thrown about. He's he's just sort of decided people are called different names. So obviously, <laughs> Emily is now Macca. L- L- Lanes is now Lanesy or Hells, which she absolutely hates. So. <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Well, they're all in good spirits. It's all it's all it's smiles galore, isn't it? Absolutely smiles galore. Um, so, getting, <laughs> where still were getting we? right. So here we go. So here we are. Right, I've got. We're gonna do. Put the line up. We're gonna no, I haven't. Oh. We're gonna do squad mates with you. So no, no, oh, no, no. So this is just purely as a little prompt. Oh for me. no. So you've already sort of started it, and we've we've been tipped around around edges. This is where oh, I'm gonna go. get you to help us, help our help our wonderful listeners, our Swin and Town supporters, fully oh. understand. Oh. The, that's our duck of football. Fully <laughs> understand the characters that we've got out here in front of us, and we're gonna go through the squad. And I know there are a few that aren't on this wonderful bit of paper, and we're gonna be filling in some gaps, but. Dish the dirt, Jen Gray. Dish the dirt. So, Macca, Emily McGrogan. Now, I know for a fact, because I've been told, that Emily is a bit of a banter dark horse. Would you say that's fair? She is, yeah. She's a, she's a sly one, Macca. Um, always sort of... You never know she's involved, but she is. She's a quiet one. She's, she's got a twinkle in her eye, hasn't she? She was heavily involved with uh, hiding one of my boots at Maidenhead Away. Uh, well, it's only it's good that she hid it. I've had worse things put in my yeah. boots. Yeah, oh, well, I, I, I thought, I honestly thought that I'd left one of my boots at home and, and was about to sort of go, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't be part of the squad because I, I don't have one of my boots. Uh, until I saw the look on Macca's face and was like, okay, I know, what's, <coughs> I know what's going on here. Phenomenally talented goalkeeper. She's yes. really turned heads, hasn't she? And oh, as yeah. as she's as she's sort of, you know, as the ageing process is, is taking on and she's growing... Um, you, you've seen her confidence over the course of the season grow. Isn't it? I mean, it must be great for her to hear that people have got so much confidence in her. But she's a huge presence um, beyond the defensive <laughs> line, isn't oh, she? Sorry. Hello, Meg. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Very well, thanks, mate. Good. Best of luck. Um, what's what's she like to play in front of? Yeah, brilliant. To, to be honest, um, her distribution's great. You know, she's always going to be there, uh, especially sort of corners when 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 a ball's coming into the box you know she's getting on it I, i've taken a few of uh Macca's fists to my head um when she's clearing a ball she's gone th- through the ball and then then to my head but you know what it's what we take for the clearance but so, and Macca's obviously she's got a challenge this year as well isn't she in sticks because obviously she's got grace in the development team who's going great guns um 
what are they as a as a sort of as a goalkeeping collective? What would you say is the competition like uh, for Emily? I mean, yeah, it, it's good. We've got good young players coming through. You've got Danny in the development team as well, who, as well as Maka, has fantastic distribution. Um, I think Dave is is a brilliant goalkeeper coach. So. That I think I've seen all three of them come on massively since he's come in as well. Um, so all credit to him as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but the confidence that we have in our goalkeepers, that they're, they're all such confident players. Um, and yeah, hope that continues. Do you believe that Mac is one of those goalkeepers that really is going to kind of reach the top of the game? Can you see her playing at the top level? <laughs> so my opinion will be different to hers in this. So I can. I, I think she's absolutely brilliant. One of the best goalkeepers that I've ever played with and really could go go the distance. Mm-hmm. But I don't know that she has confidence in herself to do so, which yeah. is something that as a group of players we're trying to sort of drive into her and, and sort of push her forward. Yeah. It's, yeah, but again, so much of what we talked about earlier, Jen, I think feeds into that, doesn't it? In terms of the, the team, the club, this group of players, the kind of players, their backgrounds, how they found themselves at Swindon Town. Yeah. That learning curve that they're all on, it's very, what you've just said about her is very much representative of that sort of sentiment, isn't it? So you're needing to break away from, like, I'm, th- I'm not doing this for fun, but, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. I can actually get there. Yeah. It's obvious to me she can. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be honest with you, I, I've played in I've played in men's teams where I've been vying for, you know, the goalkeeping position in a men's team. And the people that I've been vying for, I look at Emily's handling now while she's warming up. They're not a patch on her, no. you know. So and and that's wonderful. And I've always been super. Well, you all know from conversations we had. Just think, I've always been super critical of women's goalkeeping, and I genuinely love watching Emily play. Oh yeah, right. The so confidence as well. It's just that deals with Mackin. Now, dish of dirt on the skipper, Alice oh. Bowden. What's she like to play alongside, and what's she like <laughs> as a skipper? Because I find her frightening. <laughs> she can be. Oh, she can be. Um, honestly, playing alongside her is great. I think me, me and Val actually go way, way back. We played uh, under twelves football together, under tens, I think. We, yeah, so we we both started at Blunderson. Um, I, I think it was under tens to be honest. Um, so I've known her for absolutely years. But yeah, playing next to her, I'll, I'll never forget. Where were we playing? Which game? Oh, it was it was a few games. I think it was Moneyfields at home, um, and I was last man and I'm running alongside this striker and I think God I, I don't want to give away a penalty here I don't, I don't, but she's in if I don't do something now she's in and all I heard was Alice Bowden scream at me slide that's all I heard and so I thought right well I better slide then because Bowden just told me to do it Yeah. so straight in sort of won the tackle and, and to be honest that, that's the kind of confidence you need from, a, from your captain she's telling you you've got to put this tackle in and you know, I she did. doesn't hold, she doesn't take any prisoners, does she, no, Alice? So I've I've not. had conversations with Alice where I've been sort of trying to be sort of as I've been trying to feel my way into the women's game. I've been sort of tiptoeing around that. She literally is just like Hannah, stop like chatting crap. Like, what exactly are you getting at? Like, she's got that wonderful yeah, yeah, yeah. directness about her. She's totally no nonsense. So I can, say, but she literally has. I mean, she's looking at the warm up now. She's at the front of the warm up. Everything that they're doing. But she literally leads that group totally, doesn't she? Yeah, she's she incredible does. captain. She's a massive character as well. I think you know the the club, you know, owes a lot. She's she's been here for. She's on a. I think we were talking yesterday we were, when we were walking back to the cars after after the county camp, and she was saying, if she plays every game that's left of the season, she'll have had 145 caps for the women's first team. That's incredible, um, isn't it? Which is just unbelievable. Mm. So. And what do you think her future will be? beyond playing can you see her managing teams can you see her leading from that perspective do you think she's got an interest in coaching I don't know I think she would be really good at it but I don't know whether it's part of her future she obviously Bowser's a mum she's got one beautiful little girl mm-hmm. um, I definitely think maybe the extension of her family will happen and, and that might be her focus but yeah. Um, yeah yeah she's definitely got a bright future anyway regardless of what she does who we got next um, right Annie Colston Annie <laughs> she scores when she wants. She scores when she oh. wants. What do we uh, want to know about Annie Colston? So, as a, I'm, I'm guessing, I mean, obviously, you've been at the other end of the pitch. Yeah. When the ball goes forward, that must fill you full of confidence, knowing that if that ball lands anywhere in around the 18-yard box, she's liable to work a goalkeeper, at least. She's, yeah. So, Annie Colston, money, money fields at home, not long ago. 
It was my first game back starting after a little stint. I say a little stint, a decent stint on the bench. Mm-hmm. And um, we were first sort of five, ten minutes, I think. And uh, I pinged the long ball over. And I just watched it go. And it bounced in front of her on the half volley, lobs the keeper. And I just thought, that's my striker. Clinical. You are making me look good here. Yeah. Thank you, Annie. So, yeah. <laughs> She's basically there to make the, the rest of our um, assists look good. Mm. Um, but she does it so well, honestly. Yeah. And she's so humble as well, isn't she? She is. She is, bless her. So um, desc- describe her to us as that. So I was just mentioned, I was just sort of like putting words in your mouth there. But describe her to us as a character. Oh, she's what's cheeky. She, what's she like in the dressing room? Is she good banter? She is. She, she's a cheeky character, Annie Colston. You never know what she's up to. She's always in the corner giggling with Lanes and, and, and Macca. So... The three of them together is, is sort of a little powerhouse of players, but, you know, they're always up to something, those three. So, who we got next? Let's go with... Oh, well, we might as well. Since we've just talked yeah. about Annie, let's talk about her partner in crime, Lane. <laughs> they are the double duo. They certainly are, aren't they? Um, <laughs> Tweedledee and Tweedledum. So, we've talked about Lane's from a fan's perspective earlier. We said that Ellis was saying that Lane's is the, the player that I think, if you're a supporter sat in the stands, she's the ball gets to Lane's feet. And straight away, you think pace, creativity, flair. She's a, she's the sort of player that a fan loves to watch. What she likes to play with. Oh, brilliant! You know, if you if you're sort of head down, there's nothing on. You think I don't know what I'm doing with this ball now. You think right, I'll put it in the corner. Laser get onto it. Mm. If there's you know that that if there is nothing else on, hit that corner flag and. 90% of the time, Helena is going to get, up, get there. And she's another player that's pretty much grown up here as well at this she football has. club, isn't it? The family, yeah. are, family of Swindon Town through and through. Yeah. See, the dad's a big part of the committee as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, she's she's brilliant to play with. And, and you know, every time I've, I've, I've sort of had people I know who come to the game to watch, after they always say to me, who's that, who's that girl on the wing? Christ, she can run for days. Her legs, she's so... So, yeah, yeah, everyone... Everyone notices Lane. And she literally is a 90-minute player as well, isn't she? Oh, yeah. She's unbelievably fit. Um, yeah. But even watching, so even even Lanes at the start of the season, I was saying she was a 90-minute player then, but you see Lanes' fitness levels have noticeably increased as yes. well as the season's gone on. Yeah. Um, she's, she, she looks like a totally different kind of physical specimen as the season's unfolded. She's really committed. I guess what I'm trying to politely say is she's really committed to the sort of more professional approach to your training. You can see that, in her, just see the change in her. Yeah, I mean, like we were, we were talking about it yesterday as well. You, you look at Lanes as, as a fullback and you think, got no issues here, I'll knock her off the ball. Because mm. she's, not, she's not a big physical player. But we were talking yesterday, and I can remember a time where Lanes has put, had me on, on the floor. You know, she uses her body weight so well. All she does, she sees you coming. She she puts a stance in, and she puts mm. players twice the size of her on the floor. Johnny so. Johnny Williams. She's very Johnny yeah. Williams, Ellis, yeah. isn't she? When yeah. you watch her play, she's not. And I don't mean that as in she spends a lot of time on yeah, the deck. Yeah, I was going to say she doesn't. I was just but... about to say she's not on the floor as much. <laughs> <laughs> but she, um, yeah. You, Talk about using her body well. Yeah. She does uses her body brilliantly. Who have we got next, Ellis? Meg Attenborough. Oh, oh. Meg Attenborough just what, came over and said hello. One of my personal faves. <laughs> so, the the thing that really, I mean, listen from my point of view, Jen, I love watching Meg because she really is box to box. Oh yeah. Um, would you say it's fair to say she's probably? I mean, appreciate she's a, so she's a personal trainer um, away from football, but she really does like give lung busting performances out there, doesn't she? Oh, she is. I, I would have to say that Meg is probably physically number one within the squad in terms of fitness uh, and strength. You know, she, she puts in extreme dedication to get herself there as well. It's, it's not come easy to her. Mm. She wasn't born naturally sort of giftedly fit. She has worked her arse off to get to where she is. Um, and I think it shows in her performances as well. You know, she's getting more confident on the ball as well because it's not just her physicality um, and her fitness. She's also great with her feet. She's she's really good on the ball. So, yeah, yeah, you're seeing all that this season as well. And I think there's a lot more to come from Meg. Another name that is is going to be no stranger to Swindon Town supporters is a certain Miss Gypsy Vivash. Oh. So again, family lineage at the football club. Um, yeah. You know, her uncle AD and um, stalwart of the uh, of the men's team, part of the 1993 promotion squad to the Premier League. Um, what can you tell us about Gypsy? And again, one of those names, she's been associated with the club for yeah. a very, very long time. Uh, tell us what you can. Dish the dirt. 
I love Gypsy's a brilliant player to have around. She's come sort of out of herself massively in the last season as well. Um, I first met Gypsy when I came here about like you know four years ago when I started, and she's so quiet. You know, that's one thing that has noticeably changed. Is she's just come into herself. She's so much more confident as a person and a player now. Um, and I think this season's performances have showed that she's so much more confident on the ball, driving forward. She's got a brilliant ball into the box. You know, she's had a decent. For, as a left back, she's had probably more assists than anyone else, other than Helena, more assists than anyone else on the team, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Like from all the way at left back. So, you know, I, I think she's one to watch. To be honest, one to There's watch. There's a lot more to come from her as well. Uh, yeah. Look, well, again, she's a. a um... She's only young. Yeah. 22, 23. A pup. You know. A pup like that. <laughs> uh, and speaking of pups, Lucy Durham. Tell yeah. us all about Lucy. Lucy is a brilliant character. I have absolutely loved Lucy coming in this season. She's sort of like a ray of sunshine at every sort of session. She's that player that the coach talks and he explains what's going on. And you look at Lucy and it's just glazed eyes, you know. And she looks over and she goes, what did you say? <laughs> and um, she, she's just brilliant to have around. And I also think that her confidence in playing has sort of come out towards the end of the season. She's getting a lot more minutes now um, and just getting more confident on the ball. She's got a brilliant shot on her as well, which we haven't been able to see so much yet. But I think, again, also very young, 21 years old. So got a lot of time to sort of improve and come into herself here at Swindon. So, yeah, hoping to see a lot more of her next season. Um one of the arts of Tom Broadbent now sponsored athletes. Um, Anna Barnes has just returned to the club. So how Barnsley. nice was it to see Barnsley back or Digger as we as we christened her recently on the show? How, lo- how lovely was it to see Digger Barnes back at the oh, club? It's brilliant. It's always brilliant to have all, sort of socially awkward Digger back. Barnes. She told me she says I'm socially awkward, Hannah. She, <laughs> really? To be, I would agree with that. When I first met her, again, it's the same sort of like your gypsy, your bar. We've had a lot of players who've come in really shy and sort of quiet. And when they leave us, you can't shut them up. And Barnsley's one of them. She's come in the second time and it's a whole different Barnsley. The first time she came in, she's quiet. She's a bit shy, you know. And then the second, again, this is, I'm telling you, it's Annie and Lane's. Same with Macca, she was quiet and shy. And then Annie and Lane's getting to them. Barnsley's come back and she's, you know, it's a whole different player. She's so much more confident. Um, and I think, again, confidence in personality, I think it, it does transfer through onto the pitch as well. Like when you're confident in yourself, you play better as well. So I think we've seen that in a lot of players this season. Who we got next, Ellis? Tori Taylor. Ah. We've done Lucy, yeah. Tory Taylor. So, Tory, <laughs> yeah. what an absolute treat it was to be in Tory's company yesterday. I, I tell you, this was my perception of Tory, and you're going to probably say, no, she's totally different to that, Hannah's. Come on. But um, yesterday, Tory stands there. She's the dark horse in the back with this sort of like cheeky grin on her face. And she doesn't say anything. But then the minute you say something to her, she's like straight on it. It was oh, almost yeah. like she'll wait for you to come to her. And then it's banter non-stop. I was absolutely... Just to put you in perspective, dear listeners, Tori Taylor's got a pair on her, let me tell you. She turns up in the town end wearing a, <laughs> wearing a West Ham coat. Oh, she doesn't care. She's got a pair on her, let me tell you. West Ham coat in the town end. She's got some front. But tell us tell us all about um, Tori Taylor. Wonderful oh. personality. I really enjoyed her company yesterday. Tori Taylor's brilliant. And she's so good to have around as well. You know, she. I got the scorn from her yesterday announcing that she's the oldest player at the club. But, <laughs> you know, but I, but I think you need those players sort of with, you know, you've got Tori and myself here sort of like the old heads. Um, but having her around is great. She comes with sort of a wealth of ex- experience and knowledge that she's not scared to share with everyone. Yep. And I think having her on the pitch especially as well. She sort of she was playing a sort of more attacking midfielder role at the start of the season. She's moved to more of a number four towards the end, uh, and I think it's just suited her down to a T. She's had more sort of visibility of the game. She controls the game more, and she's able to just sort of talk to everyone all the time. Um, and as a character, from what you as you saw yesterday, she's just brilliant. Yeah, uh, she's just gen- genuine person. A real a mum of the group as well. I noticed. Yeah, I mean, as you yeah, would yeah. sort of expect her to be because she's the more experienced pro, but yeah. she really sort of it, it adopts that role of being, um, you know, someone in the squad that the younger players are very much kind of hanging off, and I mean that in a nice way. Hundred percent. You know, she's someone that you can go to for for advice, but also she's not going to mollycoddle you as well. If you go to her and you say, 
taught, do you think I, how, how do you think how do you think performance was? If you had a shocker, she's gonna go to be honest, not your best, you had a shocker. She's gonna tell you it straight, but she's gonna then say, This is what you need to do to change that. She's not just gonna say, Well, oh, you've had it you've had a mare, see you later. She'll go, This is what you've done, but this is what you need to do. She you know, she's here to improve everyone as well as herself. So Uh we've already talked about the next lady. Yeah, haven't Re- we? Rianne Bourne Haller. Oh, what a girl. <laughs> what a girl. Right, if you now listen, I want to open up by saying this to you, Jen. Right, yeah. I we we talked, um, we we talked. I don't know how we end up as a couple of guys, like you know, talking about it. We started talking about this earlier, and it seems to be a common theme that the, the notion of recovering or rehabbing yeah. from pregnancy yeah. and childbirth is obviously as a, as a as a guy, you're never going to you're never going to fully appreciate. What, what it is to return from pregnancy, obviously. Yeah, yeah, but guys sure. will return from serious long-term injury and they'll know the pain of rehab. No no pregnancy, no sort of like, you know, childbirth process is the same for, yeah. you know, from it's different from one woman to the next. But I, Jen, was gobsmacked that only a few months ago sat in a commentary box with Re as she's nursing a newborn baby. And then here we were two weeks ago and she's putting in a lung busting performance in an r- unfamiliar position, but not yeah. just an unfamiliar position, bleeding wig back Hello. where it's happened down the flank. And we were like, we'll be lucky if we get 45 minutes out of her. We've got practically 90 minutes Hello. out of her. Incredible. Tell me about this woman. She must be like built of, of stern stuff. <laughs> Honestly, we were actually, me, I gave Tori a lift home yesterday and we were actually talking about Ray. Um, and I was saying to Tori, I said, I cannot believe how well she, and how strong she's come back. I said to Tori yesterday, I said, I think she's come back stronger than when she went off pregnant. Wow. But I think part of that is just that desire to be back as well. Like, I can't believe how sharp she is after having a baby four or five months ago. You know, it, it's unbelievable. Her touch is still there. Her passing is still there. And it, if anything, it's better. She just looks so sharp. And I honestly couldn't be prouder of her. She's come back and she's shown what it means to her. Uh, and I think she's getting her deserved by being in the starting lineup again today. You know. She's, yeah. Um, well, we've just had the starting lineups, but look, so have. look, let's let's give the listeners the starting lineup, shall we? And then we come back to our teammates because we're we're about two thirds of the way through. So, um, Swindon Town women line up today as follows: in goal, we've got Emily McGrogan, yeah. Chipsy Vive. Ash will be expected to be a left back. I'm guessing, Jen, I would today. Think so, yeah. Um, Ella Harris. Where are we expecting Ella to play? Right. We'll be, she'll be at full back. Yeah, she'll, she'll be right, right full back. back. And then we've got Sky Hole, who I'm guessing is going to be right centre back, and, yeah. and then Bowd, uh, Bowd's on the left centre back position. Rianne Bourne Hallett, do you think she's going to be sliding back in more sort of central midfield? Yes, I, I think I think it'll be Rianne, Meg Attenborough, and Me- Mia Mugford here. Meg Attenborough and Mia Mugford making up your three, your centre centre midfield three, and then it looks like three up top by the look of this, as we predicted before the game, yeah. Ellis. Um, it's looking like Annie Colston at the tip of the spear, supported by Lanes Diaz Butcher on the right-hand side and Emerson Evans down the left-hand side, which is perfect timing because, teammates, Emerson Evans. Tell us a little bit about Emerson because we used, yeah. we were talking a little bit about her before, precocious talent from a fan's perspective. Um, what she likes a personality. Yeah, this is, to be honest, I, I sing Emerson's praises a lot to, to sort of anyone who, who will hear. Not just as a player, but as a person. She's so humble as a sort of 17-year-old with that much talent. She's really here to learn and listen. And she's not coming in going, I'm 17 years old and I'm, I'm, I'm playing. Mm. I, don't, I don't care what you have to say. Like, you know, you get some young players who just have that arrogance about them. But Emerson has none of that. You know, we, we were at a training session a few weeks ago and... Um, Basically, we've been Emily had been told to ping the ball basically at me and Emerson aerially, and he wanted Emerson to deal with it. And after about three or four, she said to me, Jen, how are you winning it every time? And she listened. I spoke to her. I said, look, you need to get in front of me. And use your body. Put some, put some weight on me. And she just goes, all right, OK. Next time, she, she sort of gives me the shoulder and wins the ball. But she's not here. To, she's here to listen and learn, which yeah, I right. think is so good because players like that will not stop getting better. She's not gone, right, I'm good enough, that's that. Mm. She's gone, oh, I'm good enough to play, but I want to be better. Uh, and I think that is definitely one to watch. Wonderful. Well, look, we'll just continue. For those of you that are joining us a little bit late, we've got Jen Gray here. We're pitch side. Myself, Hannahs and Ellis, pitch side at Foundation Park ahead of Swindon Town Women versus Portishead. Um, if you are sitting at home today, you've not got your Sunday plans, what the bloody hell are you thinking? 
get off your asses, get down to the county ground, pay your money and get into Foundation Park. It's a beautiful day for the football. Um, Jen is currently taking us through um, Squad Mates Remastered. Uh, she's taking us through um, every single character, blow by blow, and giving us insights into what makes these wonderful, wonderful ladies that we're going to be watching today taking on uh, Portishead. So we've just had the starting lineups, um, and Jen is just um, about to give me um, a similar age group, similar age group, yes. not far behind, or not far ahead of Emerson in development. Older, yeah. Only a year, we've got Sky Hull. We do. Nippy defender. Brilliant. What can you tell us about Sky? Another, again, another great young player. And again, a, a personality that I've really enjoyed having around the squad, you know, which which would be hard, could be hard for me. You know, Sky's come in and, and that is essentially how I found myself on the bench because a fantastic young player has come in. But I can't be bitter because I tell you what, Hannah, she's bloody brilliant. Mm. She is such a good player and a great person to have in the squad that you can't be angry about that. She's only improving things. It's and not again, personal, it's competition. It's not. She's fantastic. And honestly, again, she's only going to get better. Um, she, you know, her touch, her, the balls that she plays are fantastic. And she's a good little character as well. Mm. We have a good laugh. She um, she takes a lot of the brunt from me, bless her. Um, but she's so easy to take the mick out of. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't help it. Line and sinkless guy. Um, someone who is really easy to take the mickey out of, and I, I absolutely loved getting to know this personality when she made us a Tom Broadbent Lounge debut. Just recently signed, re, um, re-signed for the yeah. club. She's had a previous spell um, at Swindon Town Women. Is the wonderfully charismatic Charlie Rowland. Yes. Um, I, I just all I want to do is sit and sort of eulogise about Charlie. She's such good banter. Um, it must be great having her back involved with the team. Yeah, yeah. She's a good egg, Charlie. And it's really good to have her come back in. You know, before Charlie came in, I think Annie didn't really have much. We didn't have many forward players. Uh, and I think having another experienced striker who has proven record of scoring goals on our side is just brilliant. And again, a great character. So it's a good job I like everyone, isn't it? It is otherwise, a good job you like everyone. Be really awkward. Well, there's a, reason we, there's a reason we brought you along today, Jeremy. You're generally you're not, universally liked. The, the problem is you're not going to get any dirt because I love everyone in the club. So I can't help it. So, um, uh, in- interestingly, we said about, I mean, I think... It's an interesting challenge for Charlie, isn't it? Because she said to me, coming back to Swindon Town, was that you know she'd been convinced that she will get opportunities, that there will be um, big opportunities for her to develop. She's got massive ambitions in yeah. the women's game. Um, but interestingly, her returning has sort of also coincided with the explosion of Emerson Evans' it has, opportunity. Yeah, yeah. So it's not just about Annie can't stop scoring, but then you've also got Emerson coming in on the left hand side. Yeah. So it's got to be quite hard. She's going to have to be patient, isn't she? At the she same is. time. She is. I mean, pa- patience, yeah. You've got to be patient and you've got to just work hard. All you can do is work harder. That's how I found myself. You know, I, I, I went through a big stint on the bench and then I've. Until now, unfortunately. Uh, <clears throat> but, I, you know, I started the last three games in a row. Yeah, we and... remind those that have just tuned in that, of course, at the moment, we find ourselves yeah. sat here <laughs> with Jen Gray suspended following a red card last week. It was two yellows, right, Hannah? Well, it was two yellows, yeah. Which I know, it's not safe. But as well, I don't know, you're, you're starting to sound a little bit like Luke Williams. As if three draws yeah. make a win. But yes, no, two yellows make a red card in my book, Jen Gray. There's uh, no getting away from that. This is true. It's, yeah. But yeah, she's gonna, she is going to have to be patient. She's going to have to keep working hard um, and show her grit as well. And I think yep. that's something that Cookie wants to see. Mm-hmm. He wants to see that you're willing to work hard and you're willing to get through those hard times as well. You need to have sort of a bit of grit about you to show that, all right, it's not going in my favour now, but what am I going to do to change that? I think what's really exciting from from my perspective as a supporter is that, um, you know, Annie, I mean, we're in a privileged position that we can have these conversations with you guys, but Annie was very keen to point out that, um, you know, she really, really welcomed Charlie's arrival at yeah, the football club. Yeah, yeah. You know, that as a, as a number nine, even though she's there, she's busting her ass and she's scoring goals in her stats, so it's a, a, a brilliant at the same time. I guess nothing quite drives you on like someone wanting your shirt, right? Exactly. So that's a positive. Exactly. So Charlie Rowlands, well, like I say, absolute diamond. Absolute diamond. And then another two, speaking of diamonds, this was probably one of my favourite moments yesterday, being able to introduce Nat Goodright to the Swindon Town fans because Nat 
couldn't be more Swindon Town as she tried. No, generation after no. generation after generation of family members got season tickets. She's a season ticket holder herself up in the Arkles. And yesterday she was just so shy. She is, and then I asked yeah. her the question, what does it feel like wearing the one, wearing the red and white that I know you love and that badge on your chest, how does that feel? And her face lit up and she became like a different person, almost like in the click of her fingers. She loves this football club, doesn't she, Matt? She absolutely loves it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, she, I get, she is a great character to have, have around. You know, someone who actually sort of, it, it's all heart for her, you know. She does it because she loves this club. You know, she's grown up watching the men's team. And again, she's, she's slightly younger, you know. She hasn't seen, seen this as well. She's been at the club for years. And for her to now be able to play on the county ground and call it her home ground when she's there, unbelievable. She never could have even dreamed of that when she was a kid watching them play. So listen, I'll take, I'll take you back a few years. This is where I love Nat's story. So I was um, a shirt sponsor at this football club between 2009 and 2015. My brain's going a bit foggy these days, but I got an opportunity to finally play on that county ground pitch. And it was literally magical. To think that Nat's in this position where she's playing for Swindon Town, legitimately on that pitch, but also going and supporting Swindon Town, maybe the day before, just blows my mind. Like, how, yeah. what, what must go through her head? And, and like I said, I, I said to her yesterday, what does it feel like? And, and I cannot begin to describe how a sort of shy individual that's hiding behind you lot just suddenly <laughs> became the life and soul. Yeah. Like, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Ella Harry, she's out there right now. Tell us about Ella. Ella's a firecracker. That <laughs> Honest, I wouldn't, one thing I say about Ella is I wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of her. But again, this is another young player that's come through the setup. She, she was at the, in the development team um, last season. Mm -hmm. um, was sort of given the nod this year to come up to the first team. Um, and she's, she's had a lot of appearances, you know. Um, and she's done a really good job. So hopefully she can keep progressing and be a big member of the team next year. You know, she's got many years ahead of her. She's only, uh, well, she's one of the young ones, 18, 19 years old. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, she's been a really good player to have around. And uh, Kat, who we, we got Kat, have we got Kat on the bench today? Kat's on the bench Kat's today, isn't she? Not Is she not today, on the bench? No, she's yeah. not here today. So tell us about, she's not here, but tell us about Kat anyway. Kat's a great personality. Kat back um, until Kat or Catherine Kat, back. Kat. Depending back. on whether or not you're reading a squad list. Cat back is that player that is a hundred percent all of the time. She never has an off day at training. You know, sometimes you, you come in and you can see someone's lethargic. She's not here, you can say something nasty no, about no, Kat. No. You don't realise that. I'm, well if you're listening, Kat, if, we're gonna say something we're gonna, go, we're, gonna, we're gonna find a really nasty story about well, it. <laughs> well if, if you like her, if you like her ankles, you go don't go near her at training. Ah, there you go. I can't talk much, but she's you know, an ankle breaker. But she she's a hundred percent all of the time. You, you know, she's that player at training who just drives the standard because she's she's working hard. Honestly, never seen a harder worker during a training session. Honestly, it's I can't speak more highly about her. Now the next the next player also <laughs> absolutely she had me at hello. Mia Mugford. Mia Mugford, the lady that yeah. and I quote, this is what she 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 got me hook line and sinker when she said Hannah's, when I go down, I go down like a sack of the brown stuff. But she used a slightly alternative word. Um, she, when she takes her clatter in, she said she she literally causes earthquakes, which I thought <laughs> was absolutely. But what a wonderful, wonderful character. She's one of those yeah. individuals that I'm guessing um, her return to the football club must have been greeted with smiles around a, so across the board. She's yeah. such a she's such a great personality. Tell us tell us about yeah. Mia. I've really, really enjoyed getting to know Mia this season. Um, I didn't really know her from her previous spell. Um, but her coming back in, as you said, she's just all personality. She's absolutely awesome to have around. Um, you know, we, when we had St. Austell away, me and, me and Mia were sort of in our own world having a Harry Potter quiz for the best part of an hour. Um, while every other player was staring at us like, what is wrong with these two? But I, again, she's brilliant in terms of personality. She's honestly one of the best banter in the whole team. Luckily for me, we've got very, very similar sense of humour. Um, and then her playing ability as well. Again, she's a bit bit like Kat in terms of her work ethic. She's always 
always running. She's she's all over the place. She's brilliant. So great, great character. Very welcome back to the scene. Well, to those wonderful listeners that are with us right now, we've got a little exclusive for you because on the May the 14th at the County Ground, we've already hinted about this on Wednesday night, but we are going to be hosting a Swindon Town Class of 2012, um, the League 2 champions from 2012. The bulk of that squad are going to be taking on a Swindon Town All-Stars 11 at the county ground, under floodlights, and that squad, the all-star squad, are going to include players from the Macari era, the Glenn Hoddle era, the Steve McMahon era, the Richie Wellens era, and crucially, we are going to have a healthy smattering of the players that are out there in front of us right now. And that includes Elena Diaz-Butcher, Annie Colston, uh, who else have we got? Mia Mugford is going to be there, Anna Barnes is going to be there, Charlie Rowlands is going to be there. And so is Captain Alice Bowden. So if you are a fan of the women's team and you've not necessarily taken in men's football, or if you're a fan of the men's team and you want to learn more about the women's game, um, or if you're a fan of both teams, you're just looking forward to seeing the top quality players that we have on show for you today. Well, a good smattering of those ladies are going to be out there on the pitch on the 14th of May. They're going to love that opportunity, Jen, aren't they? What do you think that's going to mean to them? That's going to be fantastic as well. And for them to go out and enjoy it without the pressure of it being a sort of league game or a, a cup game, I think I, I think that would be one of their most enjoyable nights on that pitch. They're so gonna be far. they're gonna be playing against seasoned internationals, they're yeah. gonna be playing against um leagued like professional men's league winners. They're gonna be managed by Richie Wellens. And um, I don't want to tell you who the other manager's going to be yet because it's going to spoil things. But we want to keep our powder dry on some fronts. Um, what's really interesting about it was um, I'm in the process of organising the game with Paul Caddis. And we're going to be yeah. the game is going to be a charity fundraiser, raising funds for type 1 diabetes research. So we've been given the county ground pitch for the night. All proceeds are going to go to type 1 diabetes research. Um, I think the really exciting thing was... As soon as I said to Paul, I think it's an opportunity to get some of our sponsors, so Tom Broadbent Lounge, athletes involved. Paul straight away went, outstanding, Hannahs, get them involved. And as we started sending the invites out to the girls, the, the expressions on their faces were absolutely tremendous, Jen. So to your point about I think it's going to be something they're going to enjoy, I'm pretty certain they'll, they'll, they'll be as nervous going out on that pitch as they will for any of the games they've played out there so far, yeah. even though it's a bit of a fundraiser. Um, right, so... Back to business. Back to business, Jen Gray. So yeah. here we are. We've had um, two, I stupidly said on Wednesday night, we've had two 4-0 defeats, but we haven't. We've had a 4-0 defeat, but a 4-0 gap in the scoreline in the 5-1 defeat previously back-to-back. What, what, what's going to be the vibe in the dressing room? Because obviously they're going to have to tighten things up at the back, but at the same time, it's a very offensive lineup today, isn't it? It is. I think it, I think the vibe's going to be high. I think, you know, we, we've been training hard. The intensity at training has been really high. Players have been looking sharp. I think they're going to go out there and be ready to sort of take the game by, by both, with both hands. I think they're going to try and look to get an early goal. Um, and I think they're just going to work on that. They're going to build from that, I think. So, you know, sh- sh- strike early. And, and if they get the first goal, what would you be expecting them to do? Would you be expecting them to just continue, like just I, I think press keep, on keep, and on and on, pressing. just keep turning the screw? I think, I think we'll keep pressing. Cookie's quite a direct manager. He wants you to get in early, score goals. Um, he's not he's not concerned about sort of playing the world's most prettiest football. He just He's here to do the job and, and he wants us to do the job. So, yeah, right. you know, I, I think as far as he goes be as ruthless as you can, get as many goals. You know, our goal difference is, is currently minus minus eight, I think. Yeah, So if we, it's been a couple of heavy defeats. Exactly. So. And if, if we could do anything today to sort of build that back up, then that would be great. Um, well, as, as, as the ladies, the, the cranging that you can hear off the fence <laughs> yeah, is as the ladies like are absolutely <laughs> opening up on the Emily McGrogan with their shooting practice. But uh, the Walmart's just concluded. And uh, Mike Cook is now rounding up the troops to take them back in for some final words of wisdom uh, before uh, the game itself kicks off. Good luck, Goldston. Looks absolutely unreal in shooting practice. How are you feeling? You ready? Yeah, I've a shot. Rollins, you legend. Shock. Come on, honestly. How are you, mate? You're all right? You're all right? I'm very well. We're going to nail you after the game. Best of luck. Best of luck, Maka. Smash it. Yes, Maka. You got this, champ. It's all I've been calling you, Em. Let's go, Emerson. Um, 
that way that that weird noise won't have meant anything to the listeners <laughs> but we're just basically yeah, being jumped jumped on by the ladies as they were leaving the pitch but um who oh look at that wonderful flag that's just been unveiled in front of alice bold a big english flag with who the f-u-c-k is alice that is absolutely <laughs> tremendous get... absolutely Hannah's, tremendous Hannah's, give me two minutes i need to take a picture yeah no that. please do and get it on our thread get it get it out there Hannah's. get it tweeted so here we are yes well, from my um observant eyes um one thing I noticed, well, we're, we're for the for the listeners, we're sat right by the um, players' entrance, if you like. Yep. Um, and uh, Porter's head players look quite young. They do, don't they? they? they very, look very, very young, young squad, and and very small in stature as well. Don't mention ages. Two of our elder states women leave the pitch. How are we, ladies? Best of luck. Best of luck. Um, I th- Grace, I th- good luck. I think it's going to be. Um, that's going to be a, a huge playing factor in today's game, I think. Uh, you know, Swindon have, have got the, the experience on them. Yep. Uh, and certainly the size. Um, now, how they use that to their advantage, um, we'll see. Yep. Yeah, I think you're right. We're just saying, Jen, Ellis was just making a comment on if you compare the two squads as they were leaving the pitch, Port said are a very young squad. They are. Um, so, is this, I mean, obviously with youth, as Swindon Town, as anyone that's watching Swindon Town men at the moment will know, um, youth brings a certain amount of, um, you know, I think cavalier attitude maybe, um, a little bit of naivety though, unfortunately, and, and this is going to surely be a game where our sort of experienced heads, I guess they've got a challenge on two fronts. One is that they've got to, you know, use their experience up against the, you know, the um, the exuberance of youth. Yeah. Um, but then that's also going to give them a heads up in in certain places and using the ball slightly more wisely, better yeah. decision making. Yeah, yeah. um, how do you fancy today going? Because it was it was tight, wasn't it? Their place one 0 if I recall. Um, yeah. What, um, what's your gut feeling, Jen, going into this game? I think yeah, youth brings a certain enthusiasm as well, which sometimes can be beneficial, but sometimes can be detrimental. You know, the, the, the energy that that youth brings is can sometimes be hard to play against, but. For me, I, I think we're going to go out there and I think we're going to do a decent job today. I think it's going to be about three, I think three nil. Three nil town. Yeah. Three nil home town. How are you if we feeling could keep a clean sheet, three nil or three one, I'm saying. Um, I'm feeling very hopeful today. Um, you know, I haven't watched them against Southampton. I think they're very unlucky with the scoreline. I think they could have scored a lot, a lot more e- a- a- any other day, four or five goals. Uh, they could have scored, um, and you know, considering considering age, experience, and you know, size and stature, I think we're going to see Swindon sort of impose themselves on Porter's head, keep a clean sheet, and a good four or five goals. I think so. I'll go four now. Four pork. Right, let's just go right in. Right in. Right in. No? So, in listen for me. I mean, I'm going to be a little bit more pessimistic on a few fronts here. So, I'm going to say, like, off the back of two heavy defeats, um, where you know it's been just sucker punches, basically one after the other, after the other, after the other. I, d- I don't know whether. Mike has had enough time on the training ground to sort of deal with some of the defensive frailties that have been on show. Um, as long as as long as the girls can cut out the silly errors at the back, um, if if Emily can keep them on their toes, if Emily can command the box um, and keep it tight for the first 10, 15 minutes and maybe frustrate a slightly more youthy looking Portis head. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, the league table speaks volumes. Like, we should be winning this game on on, on on a season's worth of form. The nice thing is, as we get to the business end, the league table really does tell a story in terms of, you know, who have been the better teams across the, across the course of the season. The league table doesn't lie. So I'm expecting Swindon Town to win today, but I'm thinking that... What's going to be key is that Swindon have just got to keep it simple, just not make any silly mistakes first 15, 20 minutes. I think we will concede, um, but I do think the girls will put on a show uh, here today. I think it's going to be um, 2-1 Swindon Town. I don't think it's going to be a goal fest that, that you're talking about. I think, well, we can, um, we can hope. Yeah, yeah. I hope. I hope, like I said, nice I, to see. I, don't, I don't want to put the girls down. I don't want to put the girls down. So, but here we are, like, so... Jen, looking around the pitch, this is this is something we haven't talked about, all right? The thing that really surprised, well, not surprised me, disappointed me yesterday at the men's game was, um, I mean, the, the crowd that was declared was about 8,000. 
we're at the stage now where we are trying to encourage people to sort of come and get two bites of the Swindon Town uh, cherry, if yeah. you will. And um, because you can turn up on a Saturday, watch the men's game. You can now turn up on a Sunday, come watch the women's game. There was a certain apathy around the county ground yesterday, which for me, it was tangible. I could absolutely feel it. And obviously uh, going out on the pitch and trying to rev up a crowd that was kind of, it was fairly sparse is difficult. To what extent do you think the fortunes of the men's game, therefore, is going to impact on like attendances? Because we're hit, what are we now? We're 10, 15, five minutes away from yeah, kickoff this- now. And it's pretty, bearing in mind the previous record was 250. Busy, it? It's, you know, we're not exactly splitting at the seams here, are we? No. So what's, where, what's your, um, do, do you think that, do you think that we'll be impacted today by the fortunes of the men's team? That they were at the end of a long season, that people have just had enough of Swindon Town? Or, or I mean, do you think there's yes. something more to it? Yes and no. I think the, th- the difference with the, the sort of men's game and, and the women's game is, is this can be more of a, a sort of family community feel. Yep. And I think that's where we need to start trying to drive people coming in. Yep. You know, when, you, when you've got a young girl that's, that's playing football and has hopes, this is the game you need to be bringing them to. Mm-hmm. You want your seven, eight-year-old to be able to come and see that they, they can do something as a female footballer. There yep. is a future for them in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's going to be important. But I also think our performances will help to drive up fans. So unfortunately, you know, off the back of two heavy defeats, some people may have looked at those scores and thought, man, the point. They're just, they're, they're, you know, they're having the same season as the men's are. You know, that, that's, that's the reality as well. We need to put out big performances as well, exciting performances to drive people in as well. So. so there's the thoughts of Jen Gray, Swindon Town, that women's stalwarts currently suspended because of a <laughs> reckless red card last week. Um, Ellis, how, how are you feeling? I mean, as a, again, as a long-term sort of, I mean, you know, born and bred Swindonian, long-term Swindon Town fan, mm. um, you know, do you, do, can you see that the women's game, like your tendencies at the women's game is going to be impacted? Would you be impacted if you were like down in the dumps after a performance of the men's team? Would you feel a little bit um and about turning up today? Or is this like, again, would you, you know, because for me, like I said, I'm very much a, obviously I travel over from London. Yeah. So I've got, I mean, I've got to be enthusiastic about coming up here already. You know, that wouldn't be making that sort of journey. But exactly, yeah. two bites of the cherry, that's, that's, that's how I feel about it. It's two bites of the Swindon Town cherry. How do you feel, Bear, though? Do you think the crowd will be impacted by underperformance from the men's game? How do you feel? Yeah, I, I think you would see some some form of uh, impact. Cer- certainly from my perspective, um, you know, the, the men's team lose. Um, it's a, it's a, a big sort of uh, impact on my, on my um, mental well-being. Well, Ellis, this is this is going to be your final chance to hold hands with one of the sponsored Swindon Town yeah. athletes uh, as they enter the field. Are you going to mascot Ellis? And, well, uh, Ellis, I, I think it's only right and proper that you surely hold Mia Mugford's hand as well, you yeah. uh, as they as they Mia enter Mugford. the field. We've, Mia Mugford, we, do you need another we've mascot? We've got a mascot for we've you. We've got a mascot right. for you. Well, Ellis. Ellis, Ellis here, like, go on, go and get it go done. On, Ellis. Go and no, get, get it done. Go and get it done. Not doing it. Oh, he's not having it. Not well, it. listen, it's a spurned opportunity. I'd quite happily. Hold, hold, <laughs> hold their hand. I've never been a mascot. But I quite like the idea. Hannah's, I'm going to have to take a few minutes. No, you please do, no, Jen. My, my boss is just. No, please do, Jen. Thanks ever so much, pal, for your pre-match analysis so far. As uh, as the teams are lining up alongside us, uh, getting ready to enter the field, we've got Porter's head on the right hand side. We've got the, the the match officials, Swindon Town ladies, resplendent in their red and white puma strips. Portis Head are going to be playing in their black and white kits today, and they're just lining up by uh, the entrance to the uh, uh, to the playing field. Now, interesting. I just noticed that. Um, I know Tori. Ta- so, okay, we'll go through the same lineups again for you that are just tuning in. So, we've got Emily Grogan, Gypsy Vivash, and Ella Harris will be making up your left and right fullback positions, respectively. At centre back, you've got Young Sky Hull. On the right-hand side, partnered with Ellis Bowden, captain on the left-hand side. A midfield free, we're expecting, of the recently returned Rian Bourne Hallett, Meg Attenborough, and uh, recent uh, re-signing Mia Mugford, making up your midfield free. And then the front three expected at the tip of the spear, Annie Colston, 26 goals in all competitions. Helena Diaz-Butcher on the right-hand side, Emerson Evans on the left-hand side. Your substitutes are sub-goalkeeper Grace Kazir, um, Alice Telling, Tory Taylor, 
Lucy Durham and recent signing Charlie Rowlands, a striker, of course, as the teams just line up and the mascots are sent packing um, by uh, number nine, Annie Colston. Um, Swindon Town's... Um, uh, Swindon Town's lineup um, just dashing over for some last minute instructions from Mike Cook in front of the dugouts as Portishead assemble themselves. What looks like it's going to be a team huddle on the halfway line. Um, it's a pretty, it's a, a no surprises, Jen, really, in that lineup. Obviously, with yourself suspended, just sort of drop that in there again. Um, <laughs> with, with yourself suspended, as I oh, let me shuffle my big. That ball posterior across the seat. Come back to the game, so I need to do you guys. And uh, so, as we uh, as we settle ourselves down, no massive surprises, Jen, in that lineup, is there? So Sky Hull, effectively, um, I mean, there was no chance no. of a of a back three today, clearly. But Sky slotting in alongside Alice, who's now obviously the, leading the no, huddle. The change, I think, the only change from last week is uh, obviously me suspended. So Ella Harris has come in at fullback. Mm -hmm. so that's where I was playing last week. So. Are you are you surprised to see um, Tory on the bench? Are you is that something that you would have expected today, mm -hmm. given the recent defensive struggles? Um, surprising that they've dropped a more exp more experienced head to the bench. So Tory Taylor has, was sort of out with injury last week. So I think that's sort of the main ethos behind that. From I I I believe is that she's about. 90% right now so I think she's on the bench to come on as and when if, if needed right. uh, I think he'd rather sort of uh, heal up properly than start her um, and risk sort of losing her for the rest of the end of the season we've got two massive games coming up um, and yeah you don't you don't want to do any permanent damage by risking that so mm. so sick in the league obviously promotion out of the question today yeah. Jim what, what are they what do you believe these girls that are out there today are playing for Apart from the obvious three points, what are they? What, what what's the context here? What are they really all gunning for? At this point, we're playing for pride. Really, we need to go out and show what we can do. Um, and obviously, with a new manager coming in, it's really important for us to show Cookie what we can do as well. Um, and on the back of that as well, it, it's showing the people here what we can do. We're starting to get a few more people in. Still not as many as we'd hoped for, but. Um, Ellis, you try and get a head count sorted for us, buddy. You can include well. us in yeah. that. We, yeah. we we made sure that they counted us as we came through the uh, as we came through the gate, and no doubt there'd be a through. But yeah. we've got so just to describe the sort of surroundings here at Foundation Park. Obviously, in the in the shadow of the beautiful county ground over the right hand side, the four floodlights looking resplendent as always. The Arkle stands smiling back at us, and we can just see the corner of the Don Rogers poking over the top of the Stratton Bank. Um, Foundation Park, for those of you that haven't been here, has got a state-of-the-art 3G um, AstroTurf pitch, um, and it's, um, it's surrounded by, um, you know, 20 odd foot's worth of, um, of, of high-quality um, security fencing. To our left-hand side, you've got two um, stands um, that face directly across the field from the dugouts, um, which are, I'm pleased to say, um, pretty much full as crowds continue to sort of arrive at the county ground. Um, I would say that we um, both of those stands are filled, plus the sort of area in between right on the halfway line um, by the lone cameraman is, um, is nicely populated too. So we're underway here at Foundation Park as the Around ball... 75 or 80, yeah, I could count. 75 or 80. That's disappointing, Jen, That's isn't it? As we were saying earlier, disappointing. Count, are you sure you can count right, Ellis? Yeah. I'm a boxer. I've been punched a lot. Uh, have a, have a, have yeah. a, have a, we'll Might have another go. We'll, we'll get an official yeah. number two as soon as we've got one as Gypsy Virash picks the ball up on the left-hand oh. side and works it forward to Emerson Evans. He's in an attacking position just outside the 18-yard box on the left-hand side. She tracks back on her right foot and swings across dangerously across the 18-yard box, which is picked up on the reciprocal side by Lanes Diaz Butcher, plays it inside to um, Meg Attenborough, but possession is lost and Portishead are in possession in their left-back position as they work the ball back uh, inside and a robust challenge from Lanes Diaz Butcher. Shock <laughs> gives away a free kick on the edge of the Portishead. 18 yard box. So, bright start from town. Loads of attacking in 10 gen straight from the whistle. Yeah, straight from the off. Yeah, it's really good to see. You know, Emerson getting away on that left hand side. Uh, just need to keep that momentum up, I think. As we glance across, Emily McGrogan prowling around the edge of her 18 yard box, giving some encouragement to skipper Alice Bowden, returning left back Gypsy Vivash and um, Ella Harris, who slotted in uh, right back uh, today. So, uh, ball's back in play. Um, as uh, Emerson Evans clatters 
the um, Portis Head centre back and a free kick's given away halfway up the um, Portis Head half. Portis Head choose to go long and look to split the channel. Um, that is Gypsy Vivash and Alice Bowden. Portis Head in possession um, in the Swindon Town left back position. The Portis Head winger tries to beat Vivash for pace and Vivash uh, toes that out for a Portis Head corner. Uh, now, the benefit of us having such close proximity to the playing field here is that we can hear what the referee is saying in terms of justifying his uh, commentary. But I also need to be respectful that the players are also within earshot. So I can't call anybody rude names. Or and a big fist from McGrogan as the Away. corner comes in and drops the Gypsy Vyvash in left-back position. A Gypsy clears that out for a Portis head throw uh, in the Swindon Town defensive final third. Um, turning the screw a little bit here, Ellis, aren't they, Portis head? Yeah, uh, a decent opportunity there. Um, but yeah, opportunities from both sides. Ball back in play um, in left wing position. Uh, it's brilliantly won by Emerson Evans as the ball is um, won back by Portis head. Uh, bobbles around, the Gypsy Virus is able to put a boot through it and clear it to the halfway line as we just had official attendance confirmed. There's only 84, Jen. 84. Ellis wasn't a million miles off. Yeah, good counting, Ellis. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. As um, Meg Attenborough swings the ball out wide to Diaz Butcher in the right wing position, who flicked it inside to Mia Mugford, but Portishead have now have position, possession on the left-hand side. He's flicked goalwards. Nice header from the Portishead attacker. Um, then number nine, which Emily McGrogan catches low, just down to her right. In front of the, um, in front of a right-hand post, very, right. very scrappy at the minute, I'd yeah, say. It's a lot of um, no, both teams sort of struggle. It's not a case of struggling with the. I mean, the ball. It's it's uh, obviously the. It's very very different when you switch from a grass pitch to a three G pitch, Jen. The ball doesn't carry as well, does it? It it doesn't run as true. Um, through balls tend to hold up a little bit more on the rubber crumb. And it just seems that both sides, are, as Ellis pointed out, sort of struggling to come to terms with that. No, no one's really getting a handle and keeping the, sort of keeping the ball for long spells of time, which is what I'd like it to see us do. Just sort of get control of the ball and have five minutes of the game in our sort of possession. So Swindon Town have forced uh, a throw in uh, about 10 yards from the touchline. Um, that's uh, tossed in by Gypsy Vivash uh, straight to a Portis head defender who clear it about halfway up their own half. Vivash again on the left hand side shows some lovely footwork and persistence to, to um, battle the ball through to Annie Colston as the ball okay. breaks and the Portis head keeper is able to put their foot through it and clear it long. Alice Bowden heads in field to Sky Hole. Sky Hole plays it on to Helena Diaz Butcher. That's that's evidence what you were saying earlier, Jen. Yeah, Lane's exactly using it. her body really well, but Portishead have got some, um, well, had possession, but have since lost it to Swindon Town, and the ball has again rolled out. More scrappy play, Ellis. Yeah. You're sort of crying for someone like a Meg out and Brett to get the foot on the ball and start a dictate play, wouldn't you exactly say, Jen? Say, yeah. Just get it under. And speak of the devil, Meg Attenborough gets gets on uh, gets in possession, plays a, a lovely little ball down the flank. Andy Colston can't quite get there, and the ball goes out for a Portis head goal kick. So yeah, much for much just at the moment, guys. When you say pretty much even, Stevens. Um, Going to try and use as many cheesy '80s football cliches <laughs> as I possibly can today. Um, I think we've still only had one what not though. Yeah, yeah we one have. One. Yeah, well, I'm I'm very 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 aware. <laughs> of the curse of the whatnot, and I don't, <laughs> I don't want to be saying it too much, but this is true. This really is lovely now. As I'm looking down the field, yeah. the the crowd along the touch line is really starting to fill up. Pretty much along the line now, you've got, I would say, since the official crowd figure has been given, we've had probably about another twenty or thirty people turn up. So I do think we've got a free figure crowd here at least, Jen, uh, which is nice to see. Um, people have chosen to come out as Alice Bowden um, plays a attempts to play a through ball. Um, down the centre for Swindon Town women hasn't come off and the ball's gone left and now the ball is worked infield to Sky Hole who's delightful first touch um, and spray pass out to the right wing is now being controlled by Mia Mugford who plays a ball down the line again straight to the Portis head left back um, feeds their left wing um, and Helene's Diaz Butcher is able to wrestle possession back off of them and the red shirts of Swindon Town again are in an attacking position as Meg Attenborough has played in on the right hand side, Corner. tries to get across over but Porter's head block on the edge of their 18 yard box. Porter's head in possession and they've gone very direct, which is mopped up almost immediately by Alice Bowden. 
who plays a little chip pass forward to Mugford, can't quite control, and Portishead are able to work that over to the touchline and play the ball off of Mugford for a Portishead throw in. A lot more promising there from Swindon. Um, definitely more direct in their in their passing. Um, and, you know, questioning the, the defence of Port's head. So, 10 minutes gone. Neither goalkeeper really worked in anger. There was that um, one opportunity that McGrogan saved low to her right-hand side, but <clears throat> she was under uh, under no real pressure. As Lane, Lane's Diaz Butcher works the ball to Emerson Evans wide on the left-hand side. Evans gets the shot oh, away, yes! and it's a goal for Swindon Town! Yes, Goalkeeping Emerson! howler from the Portis head keeper, but some lovely work from Lane's Diaz Butcher. Um, infield has played the ball wide to Emerson Evans on the left-hand side, who's cut in and drilled a low shot, almost going straight at the Portis head keeper. And she has pulled an absolute Massimo Taibbi <laughs> for is, those of a certain age. This is what I'm saying about this 17-year-old. You give you give her an inch, she's taking a mile. She, what's, she give yeah. her one shot. What's beaten the goalkeeper all ends up there is the power. I think she's completely yeah. misjudged. Um, the um, the oomph of the yeah. shot, Ellis, as Mugford breaks through on the right-hand side of the 18-yard box, drills it low. Again, this time the goalkeeper isn't making the same mistakes, gets a full body behind the ball, takes possession, rolls it out to left-back. Sorry, Jen. It's Attenborough. Uh, it's Atten- was that Attenborough? Yeah. See, this is right, a- now look, this is the problem with Attenborough it. and Mugford from a distance. <laughs> Almost identical builds, or identical <laughs> hair. You know. I'm here to help you out. Thank Alice. you very much. No, you're doing a great job as Emerson Evans picks the ball up again on the left hand side. She's terrifying the port he said right back. And Evans is massive amount of pace there. <laughs> Emerson's really starting to shine. And the Portis head right back is having nightmares every time Evans picks up the ball. It's always a shocker when a goalkeeper drops one in like that. If you're a defender in front of a goalkeeper and a goalkeeper makes a clangor like that, speaking as a former goalkeeper, the, the confidence of the defenders in front of you, it's almost like Ron Atkinson used to talk about a tough tackle, Jen. He says Jen sent <laughs> off last week for such a tough tackle, Jen, as a reducer. In goalkeeping terms, that is a reducer when a goalkeeper does that. As the ball's lofted Massively. from a corner into the centre of the Portishead goal and the ball drops and Swindon Town have got an opportunity. But Portishead were able to clear as Mugford heads back towards Ella Harris in the right-back position. And um, at the same time, <laughs> I think a high boot against the Portishead centre midfielder from Mugford um, has given away a free kick just inside the Portis head half. But I was saying, Jed, if you're a defender in front of a goalie, you'd be able to speak from a defensive point of view and your goalkeeper has dropped a clangor like that. It does tend to reduce your confidence in their ability somewhat, yeah. doesn't it? As it, much as you wouldn't like to admit it. And it changes sort of how you play, you know. There's definitely been a, a shift in tempo and uh, directiveness, if, you, if you'd like, um, since that goal. As Portis head have got an opportunity just outside the 18-yard box in the right-back position. They sque- look to squeeze across, a and it's deflected away by Alice Bowden for a Portis head. Oh, it's no, he's got it's a that, lovely I, tackle I from Bowden. Captain Alice Bowden has won a, um, a Swindon Town goal kick, which is going to be taken by Emily McGrogan to the left-hand side of her of her six-yard box. McGrogan goes long uh, towards Evans, just in front of the Swindon Town halfway line. Evans can't quite control. Portis said back in uh, possession, can't make the one-two work. Oh. And Evans is sent Fair. sprawling by the Portis head right back. Um, done well to win that. Um... What were we saying about reducers just now? That was a, a full-blooded <laughs> challenge on the sprightly Emerson Evans, who was sent sprawling. I think that's just showing the desperation of playing against her already. I think it is. I think it is. As Gypsy Vivash in the left back position plays a long ball over the top of the Portis head back four, and it carries all the way through for a Portis head place kick. Now that that the goal, whilst fortunate, is probably the little runner luck that Swindon have been missing, Jen, over the last couple of games. We've had we, some really great opportunities yeah. in the last few games that just haven't been able to convert. And that's that's football all day long, isn't it? You know, you can do all the right things, and then suddenly one just goes in like that. I mean, exactly. You yeah. know, that goalkeeper nine times out of ten would have been expected to mop up that opportunity as a short back pass yeah. from Swindon Town has let Portis head centre four go one on one with McGrogan. Outstanding goalkeeping from Emily McGrogan on the edge of her 18-yard box who was able to rush from her line, slide out and deflect the ball out for a Portis head throw. Really alert goalkeeping, Ellis, wasn't it, yeah, from Emily? It, it was a great well timed tackle there. So, ball's thrown back into play from Portishead in the right wing position. Portishead looking across, Bowden intercepts. 
Portisab are able to take control of the ball again on the edge of the 18-yard box, just to the right-hand side. Some neat footwork from Portishead. And the strikers managed to break through. There's a free kick right on the edge of the Swindon Town box. There's a combination of Vivash and Bowden has sent the Portishead attacking midfielder um, uh, tumbling that very surprised he's not given a penalty there, Jen. That yeah. is literally no. right on the line, isn't it? I, I would have said she Is that just our perspective because yeah, we're pitch I, level? No, I would say she stood on the outside of the box. This this just shows, though, that Swindon can't oh can get complacent, need to stay switched on, as uh, Portisag can easily bring a goal back here. So as McGrogan setting up her four in a wall of Evans, Vivash, Attenborough and Bourne Hallett. Uh, Portis said looking probably to hit this from here. I would have thought they bend it over the wall. And McGrogan was a wonderful, wonderful pair of hands. Low down to her left-hand side. Really lovely, solid catch. This is what I was talking about in relation to Emily McGrogan, yeah. Jen. What a lovely, secure pair of hands. Oh, yeah. You know, the full contact, full gloves, full... There was, there was, There's no sort of like partial catch. It was a lovely, clean take. Totally secure. And a distribution today as well, although curse of the commentator... Um, just a little bit too much on that pass out to a left back position. Having, having a goalkeeper like her behind you just gives you confidence as well. You know, you know she's there. So Swindon Town um, are able to force the ball out in their defensive final third. It's a throw in to Portis there, just in front of the Swindon Town supporters um, to our left hand side, Ellis. Um, they've not really done much to impress, have they? Really, no. Portis said, but you can tell that. Look, as, uh, as they try and get a crossover and McGrogan makes a very, very smart interception and plays a lovely early goal kick down the field. And Lane Diaz Butcher is in on the right hand side as she looks to use her body. She's got past the right wing back oh. and the ball clatters off of the outside of the Portis head post you, and you, goes you for can a goal see kick. what Swindon are trying to do. They're trying on the counter attack. Uh, McGrogan gets the ball, puts the ball over. Um, you know, it's ca- happened a couple of times. And I. And, and that's what Mike was telling us, wasn't it? In our exclusive interview with new manager Mike Cook before the game. Um, if there is an opportunity to play the one pass, we're not going to overcomplicate no. things. And that was a prime example. McGrogan has spotted Diaz Butcher in buckets of space Ooh. as Annie Colston unleashes from distance, but sends the ball 10, 15 yards wide to the exactly left-hand it. side. It's one ball from McGrogan, heads on, head on, headed on from lanes, back into lanes from, from sort of Colston and you're in on goal. And, it takes. and a low shot from uh, Lane Diaz Butcher has just clattered off the right hand post. It could have so easily been Swindon yeah. Town women to Portis Head nil. But as it is, it's 1 0. Um, I've not been overly impressed with a Portis Head goalkeeper, Jen. Not been overly impressed at all. Um, there wasn't even an attempt to dive at that <laughs> opportunity from Lane's as uh, the ball goes out. As the goalkeeper's taken a place kick, lost it wide to her right. Um, and it's gone out for a throw and it's returned to play by Gypsy Vivash. Headed again away out for a Swindon Town throw as Gypsy plays it inside for a. Um, the ball's now bouncing around on the edge of the 18 yard box, and Portishead are able to clear to the halfway line as Ella Harris comes in from the right back position. All a little bit scrappy at the back for Swindon. Boots flashing, but no one really getting their foot on the ball as Portishead have now got a through ball. It's a one on one opportunity here for Portishead as the, they're forced wide, and the ball is cleared by Sky Hull. Um, out for a Portis head throw, but that was a worrying break. It's just Portis head showing that they're um, they're certainly offering a threat on the counter attack, and and that's really been Swindon's downfall, Jen, the last couple of weeks, hasn't it? Being caught on the counter like that. I mean, you, you don't say, hate you, me, don't I mean, hate you, on me. You say that, but don't hate last on me. week three of the four goals were scored from set pieces. So. Look, don't come at me. Or <laughs> we'll have to start talking about that. The, 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 the four of the five where you were caught on the break at the county ground. But listen, I'm happy to have that debate with you if you want. As, right. as, 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 that, was the, that was the week beforehand. Last week's issue, we've got the counter attack. Last, last week's issue was set. All right, first, all right. Uh, benefit you know, of the doubt. Well, benefit of the doubt. You know, but listen, we're not um, as... as as encouraging as the one nine yeah, Swindon Town scoreline right. is, and Swindon have had the better of the opportunities and the better of the play, we're still seeing plenty from this Portishead side to suggest that they're going to be a threat on the break. Um, as um, Swindon are wrestling for possession just inside the Portishead half, oh, they can't quite get there. And Portishead again 
looking to set up a counter, which is cut out by Sky Hull. Um, Mugford centre midfield plays it wide right to Diaz Butcher. Can't quite control it, and Portishead have got possession again in the right back position. Nice little one two from Portishead, but it's cut out by Hull and played back down the line, but again, straight to a Portishead shirt. Good strength from Annie Colston in the right wing position. Oh, she beats her man. She, she's accelerated into plenty of space on the edge of the 80-yard box. Big shooting opportunities opening up for Colston. She's beaten She's beaten four or five of her wow. opponents. She can't quite play it through to Emerson Evans. What a lovely, lovely display of skill yeah, probably from Annie Colston. One too many touches there, but it just shows the attacking intent from Swindon. <sighs> That would, I tell you what, that the could have been. The support was there as well. That could have been goal of the season if she got a shot away. She'd beaten four or five of her opponents before trying to slip a through ball in to Emerson Evans on the left hand side, who was flagged for offside. There's a little break in play here at the moment, um, trying to work out what's going on as manager Mike Cook's giving instructions to his back line, just reminding them to keep things tight and be aware of that break that we've just been talking about. As Portishead's goalkeeper takes the place kick, is cut out by Mugford, left centre midfield and forced wide to Emerson Evans, who tries to pass it uh, through the Portishead lines. But Portishead are able to turn. And Alice, has, Alice Bolton's been beaten, all ends up for a, a cross field pass, which is cut out by Ella Harris. But again, Ellis, those are the gaps that we're talking about. They're, yeah. they're very efficiently kind of beating our, beating our midfield option and then finding opportunities at the back to play into, aren't they? Yeah. Um... I, I said it earlier, Swindon just need to stay switched on. Um, can't get complacent, especially if they if they go 2-0 up. You've you still got to stay, stay switched on. Some lovely play there by Meg Attenborough. Beautiful turn from there. Lovely, lovely turn from Attenborough. Fed uh, Helena Diaz-Butcher couldn't quite make it work. And Portishead now are in possession on the halfway line. A through ball from Portishead's uh, number nine. And Gypsy Vivash is all over that like a rash and surges forward in the left-back position. And tries to play the through ball to Emerson Evans again down that left-hand side, which is causing Portishead problems. But that's been cut out uh, by the Portishead defenders. And they're back on the counter-attack again. It's becoming a little bit end-to-end, this, isn't it? The game's yeah. starting to get a little bit stretched already. As Portishead look for a long through ball through the middle, it's not going to quite carry through to McGrogan, or is it? It is just Emily McGrogan's managed to pinch that off the toe of the Portishead attacker. Plays a quick uh, drop kick downfield. Just arrowing out to the right-hand side of touch. A lovely turn, again, from Colston in number nine position. That's fed in Diaz Butcher on the right-hand side, who's shaping to cross, plays a quick first-time cross. Uh, dangerous. And it's cut out by Portishead and cleared for a throw-in on the right-hand side, which will be taken by Diaz Butcher. Thrown inside to Towns number 12. Um, nice, little di- nice little diamond being worked on the right-hand side. Diaz Butcher cuts it back. Doesn't quite work looking for a, a crossing position, a crossing opportunity. I believe that was from Mugford, was it not? Correct me if I'm wrong, down the right hand. No, it wasn't. It was Bourne Hallett yeah. down the right hand yeah, side. Yeah. Bourne Hallett down the right hand side. My eyesight's failing me. But um, who's impressed you so far, Jen? Uh, Meg in the middle, sort of the ball at her feet, fantastic. Annie Colston, always. Gypsy. Gypsy Honestly, down the left hand side. These little runs here, you see a player, she reads the players so well. Someone steps I'm gonna, into tackle. I'm gonna stand as well, Jen. I'm gonna just, stand as well. She just get drops my march on. And she's away. Um, you know? I mean, yeah, the left hand side for Swindon it seems to be where Emerson, we're causing most obviously. of the problems. But I tell you what looks lovely is as they're shaping up to try and close down the left hand side options, you know, they're they're giving Helena Diaz Butcher opportunities and space down the right hand side as well. So the, the choice of the front three tackling today seems to be working yeah. out as the ball's oh. lofted to the edge of the Portis head 18 yard box and a header down drops to uh, drops to Attenborough. Meg Attenborough just in line with a penalty spot who thrashes her shot wildly wide, spins off her foot and goes out for a Portis head goal kick to the right of their goalkeeper's right hand post. So Portishead's keeper with the long place kick plays it straight down the centre and Captain Alice Bowden is able to head that down. He drops to Gypsy Vivash. He tries to play it infield to Andy Colston. Colston can't quite make that work, but Swindon stay in possession and there's a great ball over the top from Alice Bowden to Helena Diaz-Butcher who cuts it in right to the right-hand side and a shot from Meg Attenborough to the right of the Portishead D on the edge of the 18-yard box has cannoned off a Portishead defender and has gone out for a corner. Uh, which will be taken by Towns number 12 and club captain Rian Bourne Hallett uh, to the uh, to our right, the goalkeeper's left-hand corner. 
as new manager Mike Cook looks on um, studiously from the right hand side. Bourne Hallett not giving any signal of note or issue unless she gives the signal. Um, Bourne Hallett swings across over, lovely corner. Oh, wow. And there's connection from Swindon Town, but the ball drops and it's blocked by Portishead, who are able to clear. I think that was Emerson Everson on. Evans on the end but of now it, Portishead yeah. have got that break that we've been talking about, and there's a long ball over the top, oh, and it's dropped brilliantly for Portishead, who have got one on one opportunity, but she's backtracked, and Swindon are able to get bodies back. Portishead play it back into the midfield as Portishead break forward, and they're going to shoot from distance, and that's going to not trouble Emily McGrogan from there at all. McGrogan drops on the ball. Um, before carrying it to the edge of the 18 yard box, and McGrogan again goes long. Um, straight and lovely distribution straight to Annie Colston, who's able to control, but she's had the ball nipped off her by the combative Portishead midfield, who can feed it down the right hand side. They cut back inside, and Portishead playing, and they've got a real opportunity. They're one on one with Emily McGrogan. They shoot low, and it's just inches wide of the Swindon Town upright. That was well, a, a big, big opportunity there. For a Portishead let off there. for Swindon Town, Jim. Big what did you make of that? Big let off. Should have, should have finished that, really. Should, should, really should have scored. The, yeah, striker should have done better. Uh, we had a few opportunities to, to cut that out and, and didn't. So. Yeah, I mean, it was a really unfortunate bounce on the edge of the box. Again, you saw, I think it was Gypsy took a, you know, took a swipe at it and the ball just seemed to kick up off the turf, rubber yeah. crumbs spraying everywhere and the ball's bounced through to the port. He said striker who skewed with her left boot skewed the shot a couple of inches wide of Emily McGrogan's right upright. So real end-to-end -end stuff as Emerson Evans is now in uh, possession on the edge of the Portis head 18-yard box. She plays the ball inside to Rian Bourne Hallett, plays a nice return pass down the line and Emerson Evans is able to take control in line with the edge of the six-yard box. Evans cuts it across, oh. nice cross, but that's blocked by Portishead, but it goes no further than Meg Attenborough. Takes a nice touch, tries to weave past the Portis head defender who's able to clear long and high upfield. And Swindon Town through Skyhole were able to return the ball to Emily McGrogan on the edge of 18-yard box, who pings a left diagonal pass out to Gypsy Vivash, tries to head it on to Emerson Evans, can't quite make that one count. And the ball has bounced out of play from a Portis head touch for a Swindon Town throw-in. Ball's back in play. Hardly an opportunity to take breath as Meg Attenborough looks to play a long ball down the centre of the pitch, um, which Swindon Town can't quite capitalise on. But again, Portis head are able to break incessant pace of this game. It's backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. No team really getting hold of the ball though, Jen. It's, I guess what, what Mike was talking about before the game in terms of like playing defensively, you're seeing the downside of that approach now, aren't you? In terms of if you can't make those long passes count, immediately you give it's the other team back, possession yeah. and the opportunity to counter. And Portishead are threatening, aren't they? For a team that are further down the leagues, Portishead has shown that they're by no means dead and buried in this game. They've, I mean, they've proven time and time again in this league that they can score goals and they can get results, despite being lower in the league. You know, they've still won games that people wouldn't expect them to win. So, And you can see why as well, because they've got attacking quality. They've got themselves into some really nice yeah. positions um, and they're breaking really, really well on Swindon Town. So... There's large chunks of this have mirrored the last couple of games that I've seen from Swindon Town, Gem, where there's lots of really good possession. You know, Swindon are the better team, but it's a little bit like watching a mere calm box. There's a bit of a glass jaw about Swindon in some of the defensive play at the moment. Yeah. As Swindon take a free kick oh. on the right, uh, left hand side from oh. Gypsy Vivash. The ball drops for uh, Porter's head, can't quite clear their lines, but they're hacking away at it. And they're able to work it out to the edge of the 18 yard box. There's a long ball over the top into Swindon Town's left back position which is being mopped up by Emerson Evans, who's able to work it back to Emily McGrogan, who plays a lovely curling pass back down the left flank to Gypsy Vivash, who stayed in an advanced position. And the ball has gone out of play. Again, Vivash with the throw down the line to Emerson Evans, who looks to turn her attacker. Can't quite make that work. And Portis Head are back in control of the ball, as more fans are ambling up to Foundation Park. All I hope is that they add these numbers to the um, to the attendance, the official attendance of 84 that we were given. A Swindon player, oh. delightful one-two on the edge of the 18-yard box. And there's a big challenge on the edge of the 18-yard box. It looks like Annie Colston has gone in on a 50-50 with the Portishead goalkeeper who's certainly come off the worst. And the ball bounced loose into the no-man's land and the referee's immediately blown um, for a free kick. I don't think there was any malicious intent. No. Um, from Annie there, but the goalkeeper's come off the worst, Jen. It looks like the goalkeeper took a bit of a clattering from Annie Colson there. The referee's having a word with Colson. In fact, 
he's taking the it looking he's like he's giving card. he's taking out a yellow card. It looks like for Annie Colston. I mean, Jen, as as a full blooded defender as you are, no stranger to a red card. Um, <laughs> but, um that's that's a little bit harsh. A little bit harsh honest, on, Hannah, on Annie there, isn't it? I'll be honest, Hannah, I missed that tackle because I said hello to a young fan, obviously. <laughs> well, no, well, of course you of course. Did you sign a red card for her? I mean, sorry, did you sign her program for her, Jen? Did you sign her program for her? Well, listen, while we've got this lull in play, dear listeners, we've got an opportunity for you to win a Swindon Town match day program hand signed by manager Jody Morris. Um, should that be something that you are interested in um, uh, picking up from your friend? Friends at the Sir Tom Broadbent Lounge today, I need you to send us a tweet um, or send us a DM um, with the answer to this question. The answer to this question. Jen Gray was sent off for <laughs> Swindon Town last week, but who was she sent off against last week? So Jen Gray was given her marching orders playing for Swindon Town last week, but who was she given her marching orders playing against for your chance to win a Jody Morris Sign Swindon Town program as Gypsy Morris unleashes. Wow. <laughs> Gypsy Morris, Gypsy, Gypsy Morris. Morris unleashes from um, from um, uh, the left hand side from the angle, and it just drifts wide of the upright um, of the um, uh, of the Portis head goal. So, um, who were Swindon essentially? Who were Swindon Town's opponents last week as they unfortunately went down four nil? Away, uh, away from home. Were we away? No, we were yeah. home. One, we were at home last week at Cinder Lane. So, if you'd like a hand signed Swindon Town Match Day program, hand signed by Jody Morris, um, tweet, um, and uh, we will uh, we will announce our winner um, shortly. So, um, as Portis Head break on Swindon Town, there's an opportunity on the edge of the 18 yard box for Portis Head, but the ball is cleared. Uh, by Swindon Town, who are able to maintain possession. A robust challenge from Meg Attenborough, full-blooded and a lovely piece of distribution. Crossfield doesn't quite reach its intended target. Emerson Evans, some lovely footwork as she drifts over to the right-hand side before playing Helena Diaz-Butcher, who cuts the ball back inside and Portishead are able to clear. So... We have a winner. And congratulations, Louis, a Swindon boy. You are indeed the winner of the signed Jody Morris programme, who says, quite rightly, he says, Jen, you got sent off against Exeter. Um, oh, but Louis, bless you, is saying he doesn't want the programme. Bless you. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do, Louis. We'll make sure that one of these wonderful supporters um, that's on the touchline with us today um, is given that programme in your honour. So good on you, pal. Well done, mate. And thank you ever so much for taking part. Louis. McGrogan, give us a wave. McGrogan, McGrogan, give us a wave. McGrogan, give us a wave. Oh, Macca, Macca, give us a wave. As she duly does. And the reason we're having some hijinks with the Swindon Town goalkeeper is that there is a break in play. We've got a Portis head player down on the halfway line. Both sets of players are huddled together um, with the score currently Swindon Town 1. Just over 30 minutes. Portis head nil. Yeah, with 32 minutes played. Well, what do you think would be going through Mike's, uh, Mike Cook's, new manager Mike Cook's um, mind, Jen, with, with what he's seen so far? Because, I mean, clearly, defensively, they've had their opportunities. Um, Town have been able to break and score a goal, albeit from a calamitous goalkeeping mistake up the other end. Um, yeah. What's, um, I mean, do you think Mike would be happy with the 32 minutes of um, football he's seen so far? I think there's, there's positives and there's also things to work on. I think he'll be happy we're trying to sort of implement what he wants in terms of being more direct. You know, when we when we get the ball, we're getting up there quickly. Um, Do you think they've been too direct today, Jen, from what we've seen so far? Because it seems to be every opportunity yeah. moving forward is punted long. Yeah. <sighs> I think that everyone's just trying to do what we're told. Yeah, really, right. Hannah's. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it does catch you on the counter then. Yeah. That's the problem. All right, as the ball is back in play, we report his head looking to attack down the right-hand side, but the ball is cut out and, and Swindon have got uh, control in a midfield position and Bourne Hallett attempts to play a through ball to Annie Colston, uh, which doesn't quite work out. It ricochets around. It's back in the midfield. Portis head, <laughs> winning possession, losing possession, winning possession. It's the story of the game. As Portis head looked to play a ball over the top, which is cut out by Ella Harris, but she can only play it across the um, defensive line. Portis head looking again to get in behind Vibash in the left back position. Portis head have got an opportunity from distance and a shot. 
makes the fence rattle no further than 10 feet away from our heads, Jen Gray. So they are, again, they are very much in this game, Jen, they are. aren't they? Yeah. I don't think neither side's really kind of exerted any kind of su- sort of, you know, superiority um, in what we've seen so far. No. So McGrogan plays a place kick long and it's flicked on by Edinburgh. And again, Annie Colston uh, trying to complete a flick on. It drops to um, Sky Hole, plays the ball forward down the right-hand side and it's rolled out of play for a Swindon Town throw-in. Returned quickly by Helena Diaz-Butcher. Flicked on to the edge of the Portishead 18-yard box and goes long downfield, um, currently in Swin- Swindon's right midfield position. Um, fed forward, but again, returned with interest from Portishead. It's all very scrappy, all very bitty. It's kind of, yeah. it's very, very hard to commentate on this it's game because end, it's, it? it's end-to-end. It's red shirt, white shirt, red shirt, white shirt. Nobody really getting hold of the ball and controlling it. I I, I think the one criticism well, that I would have is... As there's a little bit of needle in the left-back position with Alice Bowden has absolutely clattered the Portishead number three. <laughs> and there was a little bit of afters from the number three. A little gaggling and coming together of players. And I think there's a little bit of um, a little bit of frustration, a little bit of aggression um, from a couple of the Portishead girls and Bowden looking to um, stamp her authority on this game. But it's a free kick that's been given by the referee for that challenge to Portishead um, in the sort of left centre midfield position, about 20 yards uh, from Swindon Town, edge of the 18-yard box, and it's gone high and looped into the box. And McGrogan takes an easy catch on the edge of a six-yard box. As you probably heard, the big scream from Mike Cook do there, it. do it, diagonal to the right-hand side. And it's, and he's she's absolutely done it. And it's straight in to um, the possession of Helena Diaz-Butcher, who crosses wide from the right-hand side. But again, Portishead are able to get a clearance. And again, the break is on for Portishead as they emerge over the right-hand side. And a good ball down the left wing as Portishead break with pace. And Ella Harris has been beaten in the right-back position. And the ball runs through to the striker on the edge of the 18-yard box. But that is cleared by Swindon Town. But somehow the number nine's managed to get hold of possession again and work it back to a midfield teammate. But brilliant work from Meg Attenborough on defensive duties for Swindon Town. And she's able to see that out for a Portishead throw-in on the halfway line. So... Portishead have got hold of the ball on the right-hand side. They're trying again to work some kind of pattern of passing, some sort of pattern of play, but they're not able to do so. As Colson with some lovely footwork, neat control, plays the ball to Attenborough. He's able to play it down the line, but there's nobody there in a red shirt. And the ball rolls all the way through to the Portishead goalkeeper, who plays it diagonally um, out towards uh, the Swindon Town left wing position. With, of course, Swindon advance means Gypsy Vyvash is there, is not able to control the ball is worked back to Portishead, who are then able to clear, but no further than Vivash again, who surges forward in the left um, uh, uh, down the left-hand side. But again, Portishead are able to wrestle control of the football. Um, some cracking defensive play from Everson Evans, uh, attacking play from Everson Evans on the left-hand side. He's able to play the ball off of a Portishead player, but the referee is quite clear as given a Portishead throw-in in the right-back position. They play it swiftly down the line. Is flicked out of play by, uh, I believe, Mia Mugford for another Portis head. I mean, it's breathless stuff to commentate on this, Jen, but it's really, really <laughs> scruffy and untidy it's, football. It, it's not enjoyable. Football. No, it's very, very hard football to enjoy <laughs> as Gypsy Byrash plays it high down the left-hand side, um, looking for the run of Annie Colston. Colston can't quite control, um, and the ball is played off of Colston for a Portis head goal kick. I'd like to see us retain some possession, get a few passes in. Yeah, I, I think my one criticism would be we're almost being too direct in what yeah. we're trying to do. We're trying to force passes that aren't exactly there. I think maybe take that one extra pass that um, that you know you can play. And then when you see that opportunity to almost ping that ball forward, that's when you take that opportunity to do so. Jen, were you at the Portishead game earlier in the season? Were you playing in that game, the away game? I wasn't, no. I mean, obviously, the scoreline at the moment seems pretty much identical. Um, that was also a little bit scrappy. It would seem like, from what I from what I recall from the match reports and, and you know, feedback from Annie and Lanes and that guy, this is pretty much of a muchness. Yeah, very, very similar game. It, 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 uh, as, as Town break on the edge of the 80-yard box. And, oh, oh Colston unleashes one from distance, which again drops just wide of the Portis head right-hand post, the goalkeeper's left as she's looking at us. So, um, 
Doesn't have a little bit of crowd watch here as we glance over to our left hand side. And Ellis is uh, mm. is is doing a little bit of back of fag packet number uh, <laughs> attendance counting for us. And I, I would say that we've probably got a crowd now that's got to be pushing the hundred and fifty mark. Ellis, would you I, not say that's I, healthy I numbers say, out there? Yeah, at the moment. Yeah. It, it, it keeps keeps going up. Keep getting late arrivals. Yes, yeah, so we've got a few. And again, like we talk about the makeup of the crowd, Jen, a bit being family friendly. We've got all sorts going on here. We've got. We've got the scooter brigade. We've got packed lunch boxes. I'm seeing. We've got, but crucially, lots of smiles and lots of enjoyment. As Portis head play it high and wide into the left back position where Gypsy Vivash is caught a little bit in field. So the Portis head winger's got a bit more time. Lovely touch from the Portis head number eight, wow. who's able to use her body and engineer some space on the edge of the 18 yard box. But Gypsy Vivash is essentially sent packing. Uh, to the ground, um, but a free kick has been given to Swindon Town yep. for that rather agricultural challenge. Gypsy's just letting the referee know it's every time she's <laughs> giving him the instruction. Furious looking <laughs> Gypsy Vibash, it might be noted. There's a free kick to Swindon Town that's taken by Emily McGrogan, edge of the 18 yard box, left hand side, long downfield, a nice flick on. Um, from Rianne Bourne Hallett as the ball breaks wow. Emerson Evans, oh. who tries to break across um, the attacking midfield position, doesn't quite make things count. And the ball is back in the possession of Portishead wow. on the right wing as Portishead break forward. And again, they've got numbers forward, but Alice Bowden is able to um, get ahead on the um, uh, through ball from Portishead, high through ball. They flick it forward to the right wing back position, but the ball carries out for a throw in which Gypsy Vivash will take in Town's defensive left-back position. Vivash goes short to goalkeeper McGrogan, who puts a big foot through that. It leaps high, no further than sort of 20, 25 yards away from the Swindon Town goal on the angle, a left-back. Nice nice footwork by the uh, Portishead right wing-back, who sends Bourne Hallett crashing to the floor. Bourne Hallett gets up. She's an old stager. She's been there, done that, not phased by it. And the ball breaks forward for Swindon Town. Yeah. Portisette wrestle possession, but have done so by foul means. And it's a free kick to Swindon Town, Ellis. I, I, I think you can see the frustration in Portishead. Uh, you, you're seeing a lot more fouls now, um, dirty play. But, yeah, it, it's, it's still very end-to-end, -end, very scrappy. Yeah, very scrappy stuff. A Swindon Town line up, a free kick, which Gypsy Vivash will take just behind the Swindon Town halfway line. Vivash goes long to the edge of the 18-yard box. And Portis said are able to flick that back to the Portis head keeper who takes charge before <laughs> sending a long... And this is the story of the game so far. Both goalkeepers are getting it and both of them are looking to hit that early ball straight down the centre of the field and almost force an error, whether that's like forcing it through the bounce or just forcing it through misplaced touches or poor control. But both, both goalkeepers have clearly been instructed. You can hear the calls from the touchline. The keeper gets it in their hands. It's do it. It's long. Bang. And they go. And um, to, to be fair, it has worked. There's been a couple of opportunities where Emily's put the ball over and you know, uh, Helena's been on, on the break. So it is working. It's just, but... it's, it, it means it's relentless pace for us novice yeah, commentators. Exactly. It's, it's, re it's literally relentless pace to commentate on. And, and, and also, uh, the issue with it, it, it can become predictable. Yeah. You know, as soon as Emily gets that ball, the Portishead head defenders are thinking, right? We, we need, yeah, we need coming. to track yeah. back. Yeah, they're dropping off that extra ten yards yeah. now, aren't they? And they know they're reading it. Though. So it's going to be interesting to see as we approach the halfway line, as past the half half time point. Apologies. It's going to be interesting to see whether um, a town change their approach in the second half. Jen, if they were to change their approach, can you see how? As the ball bounces again, high through ball, which Swindon Town had a potentially enticing attacking position um, but has kind of come to nothing lots of high balls people swinging their foot at the ball looping high but Swindon have got an opportunity with Emerson Evans wide on the left hand side takes a shot but it's blocked by Portishead and again Portishead work it forward and they counter and they've got numbers and they're on the left hand side and there's three of them as they now look to work the ball inside they're in um Right, they're now in the right wing position, advancing down the right hand side. There's a shout to let it go. Now McGrogan's oh, chosen no, to come, no, and now no. she's backed off, and she's caught well from up. And the ball's bounced across the 18 oh, yard no. box, and they can clear Good, through me through Meg Attenborough in the central midfield position. But again, there's another interesting break 
Uh, goalkeeper um, uh, Emily McGrogan considered coming out, looking to clear on the left-hand side, but they thought better of it. A swing to break down the right-hand side. Diaz Butcher looks to cross, but again, can't beat her first man. It's been a frustrating half for Helena in that respect, hasn't it, Jen? It has, yeah. A town can't quite oh, maintain position. Box, I think both teams are running out of steam a little bit. It's been a relentless first half. <laughs> it's been, I mean, great, great for the neutral, I've got to tell you. But um, I, th- I think, I mean, town have pretty much shaded this, Jen, from what I can see in terms of possession and chances. They definitely look the more dangerous team, but but they've got this, Portis, they're vulnerable to the break, aren't they? Every I'd time agree, Portis yeah. head break, they look vulnerable at the back. You know, we're moving forward quickly, which does leave us open to be counter-attacked. Oh, for a Jen Gray to slot in there as maybe the old experienced head sat in behind <laughs> these two centre-backs. Oh. Um, you know, sweeping up some of these um, long high balls. They're looking to hit us on the break. But um, as Portis said, play it high down the right-hand side into left-back position. Gypsy Vivash sees it out for a Portis head throw-in. So Portis head have got, uh, have got position uh, possession. They throw it in field and um, Portis heads number six battling with um, Ryan Bourne Hallett. Town's number 12. The town have lost possession on the edge of the 18-yard box, but they're able to win it back through captain Alice Bowden, who plays it to Emerson Evans in the left wing position. Emerson Evans looks to beat the Portis head number nine for pace. Uh, can't quite do that. The ball's ricocheting around again. <laughs> Gypsy Vivash uh, picks up the ball for a Swindon Town throw in. Ball's returned in field. Mia Mugford looking to take control. Get on the ball. Mugford plays a long crossfield pass. Lovely switch of play. And Helena Diaz Butcher is battling with the Portis head left back. He's able to wrestle possession off her and play it down the left hand side. And again, some nice work from Sky Hole. The referees, there's surely a foul on wow. Sky Hole, but wow. refs let play go. And Portis had a looking to um, hit town again on the break. Vivash plays it back to McGrogan, who again plays it long and high down the centre of the field. Mugford can't quite get a header on that. Portis head, defensive header out to the left hand side, which town pick up in their attacking right wing position with Elena Diaz Butch, who plays it in field uh, to Meg Attenborough, who again. Works it inside to Bourne Hallett. Bourne Hallett plays a lovely through ball down the right-hand side. Diaz Butcher, oh, one-on-one with the goalkeeper, who's able to come out and challenge Lane's Diaz Butcher. The goalkeeper's still in possession in the left-back position, down by the corner flag, as the ball didn't quite roll out for a goal kick or indeed a corner. And Portishead looking threatening down the left-hand side now. But Meg Attenborough is able to battle back, and the referee has uh, blown. I think he'd initially given an advantage there for a free kick. But he's pulled play back. There's a lot of amused paces, faces, a lot of hands on hips. But with players retreating along with the referee uh, into defensive positions on the edge of the 18-yard box, I think the message is getting through that he's pulled play back with no advantage given and that this is going to be a free kick to Portis' head. So approximately, just trying to see where he's given instructions to set the ball up. It's right on the halfway line. And Portis said, shape it up for what's clearly going to be a long, high free kick. And Julie is delivered. Alice Bowden, a towering header from the captain. And Bowden's able to, uh, able to work that forward. The ball drops for Sky Hull as the ball's returned. And Hull has sent the ball uh, down the left-hand side, which Annie Colston has got control of. Colston plays a um, through ball down the line to emerson evans i think that is and the ball was broken oh, oh almost God. oh no it oh. does draw oh, as an offside given against meg attenborough i think that is who was coming in on the right hand uh, just taking a swipe on the right hand side of the 18 yard box um but was flagged as offside and again the ball was just ping-ponging around as has been the story of the half and it's fallen to attenborough he's taken a swipe ball's gone wide but yes uh, offside's been given, so three kicks taken. Um, Ala, a place kick from the goalkeeper, sent straight downfield. Ball bounces through to Sky Hole, who has played a very agricultural pass down the middle of the pitch, high and long. It's sent down into Swindon left back position, and Gypsy Viva, she's turned, looking to turn inside, but she's lost possession. And Portishead are able to cross, and the ball has dropped the Portishead in a really threatening position. And Portishead a shot, but it's ricocheted wide and gone into the far right-hand corner directly in front of us as the Portishead again looked to work an attacking opportunity 
but some wonderful defensive play from Helena Diaz Butcher battling back from um, the right of a front free position as the referee blows the whistle for a relentless first half of action as my co-commentator bails out to go and use the facilities <laughs> at this wonderful foundation part. Well, I mean, Ellis, <laughs> my voice has gone a bit croaky after yeah. that first half. Um, relentless stuff, mate. Not, yeah. Not, certainly not one for the purist. Um, a, a lot of um, a lot of scrappy football. Um, ball bouncing around here, there and everywhere. Nobody really getting hold of the ball. Um, if you're Mike Cook going in half time, what do you think he's going to be telling Swindon Town women here if they had to come away with three points? Um, I... I believe he would be saying just try and hold possession a, l- a little bit more, um, gain control of that of the ball, um, and maybe you know take one more pass in between, you know, putting the ball forward. I think he's going to be asking a little bit more of his central midfielders. Mm. Ellis is what he's going to be asking for. I think um, the, the problem is it's so congested in the centre of midfield. You can see that um, the likes of Mia Mugford, she's struggling to get her foot on the ball, struggling to wrestle um, any kind of um, uh, control over this football ma- over this uh, game of football. Um, yeah, they, they, it's. I mean, at, at the end of the day, it is relentless. It is just backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. But listen, I think we're um, we're going to take a um, short break here at half time. So. Um, uh, we're gonna, we're hopefully return you to the wonderful Twitter Spaces holding music, as you'll hear the beep boops and the boot beeps of wonderful eight bit eighties computing, which for some reason Elon Musk thinks is a, is a good idea. But yours truly and Ellis need both a bovril and a trip to the loo. Um, so at half time here at Foundation Park, it is Swindon Town Women One, Portishead Women Nil. Um, Emerson Evans striking um, uh, relatively early in the first half, um, working a lovely working a lovely opportunity with Elena Diaz Butcher on the left hand side before shooting low, which looked like the goalkeeper had covered and some, but the goalkeeper had crucially um, not kept her knees together, and the ball has bobbled in between the goalkeeper's legs and gone straight through um, to give Swindon Town lead. So a very very unfortunate goalkeeping error, but it's good news here from Foundation Park. It is Swindon Town 1, Portis Head nil. We'll be back with you in approximately five, ten minutes. Stay with us. Yeah, I'm, I'm right, well, here we are then. We're, we're going to be live back at Foundation Park. We thought, as soon as we're waiting for the, uh, for the ladies to come back on the pitch, we thought we'd have a little amble around and we'll have a chat with some of our wonderful supporters. So... Um, there's, there's a good old turnout here, I'm pleased to say. So the official number that they gave initially was uh, around 84. Um, but we reckon that we're actually probably pushing an extra couple of hundred now, um, which is good to see. So um, we're going to make our way over to the grandstand. Could have a chat to um, some of the folks about the, uh, the fair that they've seen so far. We'll see if we can take some um, predictions from people. And, uh, and we'll see what the, uh, the general lay of the land is as the wonderful ever present Casey Paul is climbing a fence eagerly so here we are so we've got a wonderful Swindon Town supporters hello everybody come on gather around you're live on air how are you who are we speaking to uh, Chloe. hello Chloe how are you I'm all right thanks how are you I'm all right thank you so what did you make of that first half one nil scrappy effect very hard to very commentate scrappy, on yeah. <laughs> um but um what well, obviously we know what brings you here Chloe um what, um, as somebody that clearly wears this kind of attire, you're probably used to watching games over there. What, what, how does it compare to watching games at Foundation Park? It's nicer here, actually, because you're closer to the action. Yep. It's nicer to be closer to the action. You can hear if things going on on the pitch as well. You can. Um, were you impressed with what you saw so far? Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Who's caught your eye? Is it Emerson, 17? Emerson Evans down the left-hand side is definitely. a precocious talent, isn't she? Very yeah, excited. She's quick as well. Yeah, very, very quick. Were you at the game yesterday? Unfortunately. Yeah, what did you what did you make of it, Chloe? Have you been an ever present this year? Have you gonna Yeah, season ticket holder, unfortunately. Yeah, whereabouts are you a season ticket holder? Um, Arkles. You're in the Arkles, are you? a um, little bit of a blunt affair and, and not much end to end action, but today gives you quite the contrast to that, doesn't it? I yeah. mean if it's frills and spills you're looking for, then uh, Foundation Park is delivering that and some. Definitely. Um 
it's um, obviously a new manager in charge of the women's team mm -hmm. um, and he's given them instructions quite clearly to go long as and where they can. Um, they're not disappointing in that um, in, in that approach, are they? But it's like very, very different. I don't think the I don't think the possession statistics are going to be quite up in the sixties, no, like the Swindon Town men's team. Um, what did you make the Portishead, the opposition um, from the um, from the North Somerset coast? Um, do you think they're going to pose much of a threat in the second half? Do you want to give me a prediction? Oh, I definitely think they're going to come back out fighting. You can hear between the back line as well that they are pushing for a bit of a feisty game to get back into it. Aren't they? They're good on the break, aren't they? They're good on the break. All right, Chloe. Well, give us a prediction then. End of end of, ma end of match score. What do you think? What's the result? Two one town. Two one town. We'll take that. We'll catch you later, Chloe. Thank you. You better get that right. So there's Chloe uh, from Swindon with a two-one prediction as we stroll past the first of the Mac of the grandstand, and and we approach our next bunch of victims. Hello, everybody. You're live on the radio. How's it feel? <laughs> as they all walk away terrified. Are you enjoying yourselves, ladies? Are you enjoying yourselves? Who are we supporting? Are you? We're Swindon Town supporters. Well, none, none of this North North Somerset. Let's call it as it is. We all know they're from Bristol. <laughs> So, if you go next door, there'll be um, the opposition. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really say they were from Bristol. Right? They're definitely from North Um It's all very friendly. It's, it's um, the, the, the ladies are serving up a bit of a game for us today, aren't they? It's, it's absolutely relentless to try and commentate on, as you can probably hear from my voice breaking. Yeah. But um, what have you made of it so far? I think it'd be the survival of the fittest in the second half. <laughs> Who's caught your eye? Who's caught your eye? Do we have any family out on the picture? Are you just supporters? I'm Gypsy's mum. Are you Gypsy's <laughs> mum? I'm talking to Swindon Town royalty. I'm talking to the Vivas family. This is wonderful. But I'm her hardest critic, so she won't want me talking about her. <laughs> she's had a tough. In fairness, she's had a tough game. She's clearly being doubled up on. Um, every time they, um, every time Portis said break, they're getting two or three on top of Gypsy, aren't they? And they're giving her a tough game today. But um, she's holding up well. She's holding up well. So it's clean sheet so far. Are you fairly confident they're going to take away the three points? Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Were you, at, were you at the away game earlier in the season? Were you at the away game? Yeah, yeah. well, they played Portis yeah. Head. Is it, I mean, I'm from, certainly from match reports, it seems like the pattern of play that we're seeing in this game is very similar to what happened down there. Yeah, it's, a bit, it's a lot quicker, obviously, because their pitch was quite boggy last time. Yeah. And, um, but it's definitely a faster paced game. So Gypsy's, you can dish the dirt on Gypsy. So Gypsy's been involved, obviously, with our football club for a very, very long time. Um, as I say, family royalty at our football club, which I'm, <laughs> I'm delighted to say. Ever since, I, even when I was a young man, there was a vibe ash involved in Swindon Town Football Club. Yeah. But um, she's, I mean, what, what does this mean to Gypsy to be able to turn out foundation parts, to be able to play on the county ground pitch? I mean, she coaches at the foundation as well. She's yeah. training to be a PE teacher. Everything about sport is her yeah. and, and football, so it means a lot. And believe it or not, I've actually played against Gypsy on the county ground have pitch. You? I have, yes. <laughs> Gypsy bulleted a penalty past me. I hate to have She sent me the wrong way. But um, you didn't get one of her tackles. Though. No, no, no. I did. I certainly didn't. I certainly didn't. But um, lovely to meet you. Please give our regards to Ad. It's absolutely delightful to see um, see the girls coming back out of the pitch. Um, predictions, predictions. Let's have a prediction from you, ladies. Yeah, I think three one. Three one town. Yeah, three, right. Three one Okay, three one town. So I've had a one nil up here. I've got a three one down here. I'm going to go and regain my perch on my picnic table, and we'll finish our. <laughs> Our commentary for the game. Lovely to meet you guys. There we are. So people are feeling fairly chipper um, about the um, uh, about the prospects of a Swindon Town win here at Foundation Park. So as I stroll back to our commentary position uh, behind what will be um, the goal that Swindon are attacking in the second half, um, opposite end to where Swindon notched, obviously in the first half. Glance over to my left-hand side, the county ground looking absolutely glorious on this rather overcast um, Sunday here in the heart of SN1. Beautiful county of Wiltshire that we are. So, all fairly chipper, Ellis, you'll be pleased to know amongst the supporter base. Uh, we just spoke to the Vivash family. Just spoke to the Vivash family. Swindon Town playing and supporting royalty, no less. Got a 3-1 prediction from the Vivash family. Got a 1-0 prediction um, from um, uh, just some spectators have just turned up to enjoy the game per se. So as both teams gather for their huddle, Ellis, yeah. let's have a prediction from you. So we had, um, it's 1-0 town currently. You'll be pleased to know if you're just tuning back in, listeners. 1-0 town. 
Emerson Evans opening the scoring early in the first half with a low drilled effort that went through the goalkeeper's legs. And um, after that, it was just complete chaos, the game, backwards and yeah. forwards. Nobody really wrestling control of the game. But what's your, what's your gut feel? Are you as confident as the fans? I'm sticking with my 4-0. You're sticking with a 4-0? I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with that. Well, I've got to tell you, Ellis, in all fairness, it's a big pitch out there, right? Yeah. And as the game wears on, they can't, neither of these teams could keep up that relentless pace of the first half, can no, they? I, I think you're going to see the better technical side will probably um, come out on top this half. Uh, like you said, you, you, they can't go at the pace they were in the first half. And I think this is the thing. And I mean... Yeah, if if they try and do it, one of these teams or potentially both of these teams are going to tire very very quickly, and, and chances are going to come. Right? Yeah. I think, excitingly for Swindon Town, um, Annie Annie Colston has got unbelievable levels of fitness. Meg Attenborough, unbelievable levels of fitness. So I think if this game is going to break down into a fitness battle, and surely it's going to be about Swindon Town as Meg Attenborough tanks through the midfield. Uh, to try and generate an attacking opportunity for Swindon Town. Uh, the referee allowed the first challenge to go, but the second challenge, he pulls back and gives a Portis head free kick. As Portis head go long, and again, <laughs> from the, as soon as the whistle's gone, you can just see it's the same pattern of play in the first half. It's right, both teams straight away. Your first attacking moves have come from long balls over the top. As Mugford picks the ball up wide on the right-hand side and sprays a crossfield pass to uh, Rian bourne Hallett, who flicks it on to Helena Diaz-Butcher down the right-hand side. And Diaz-Butcher is able to... I oh know she's not been able to um, force a Swindon Town throw, and it's been given to Portishead. Well, um, yeah, relent- like I said, I mean, like, there was us hoping that, you know, the instructions yeah. from the coaches, just from a commentary point of view, Alice, <laughs> would have been get your foot on the ball. Um, get the ball down, but both teams have shown their early intent to just carry on as they left off. As the ball is played back to Emily McGogan in the Swindon Town goal, and she characteristically goes long and diagonal out to Emerson Evans on the town left hand side. Evans knocks the ball back in field and it rolls back into the Swindon Town defensive third. Balls work down the right hand side to Helena Diaz Butch, who can't wrestle control, but is able to flick it onto Meg Attenborough. Attenborough onto Rianne Bourne Hallett. Bourne Hallett is not able to <laughs> regain control. And again, it pinballs around, but Swindon are able to get hold of it and they've worked it left. And there's a lovely ball over the top from Gypsy Vibash down to Emerson Evans on the left hand side. Evans is one on one with the Portis head right back. She cuts inside as she arrows the shot wide to the top left hand corner of the port. Portis head goal and the ball has just dropped wide. Swindon goes very out. quick on the counter attack there. Very, very quick. Lovely bit of interchange um, down the left hand side. A beautiful little lofted pass from Chipsy Vivash opens up Portis head. Emerson Evans, much like she did for a goal in the first half, cut inside Ellis on the right hand side, but yeah. shot didn't quite have the accuracy to bother the Portis head <laughs> goalkeeper. As Jen Gray has emerged alongside us with the most splendid looking. Sausage bap. Fueling up. <laughs> and I might add an extra layer of coat that she's doing very well with. Very well with indeed. Thank so you nice we were just saying, just saying, Jen, that there's not been, if, if the instruction's been to c- c- girls get your foot on the ball and try and take control in the midfield, both teams have enjoyed, in, ignored the instructions and it's as you were. Much the same. Much the same as you were. <laughs> <clears throat> determined to send me back to the London Ken border with absolutely no voice by the sound of it. As I feel my voice getting yeah, croakier by the moment. So a long ball from Portishead down the left-hand side. is headed forward by Swindon and Helena Diaz-Butcher on the right-hand side attempts to take on the Portishead left-back. The ball ricochets off the left-back shins and goes out for a Swindon Town throw midway into the Portishead half. It's thrown in field to Annie Colston. Colston takes control. Lovely little shimmy. Opens up opportunity on the edge of the 18-yard box for Mia Muckford, who shoots low. And there's possibly a handball from the Portishead number five. And it's waved away by the referee. And Portishead have got a break on. And there's a through ball in behind Sky Hole. who has got the pace just to get across. But unfortunate touch from Sky Hole. Who's able to recover? Work it out wide to the right-back position. And again, down the line to Helena Diaz-Butcher. Again, Jen, as you were saying, evidence of Diaz-Butcher using a strength well. Lovely flicked header from Colston as they look to work the ball forwards. Really good hold-up play from Towns number nine as the balls work back into the left-back position. And Gypsy Vivash has been caught upfield. And Portishead have got a break in the right-back. Left-back position, they shoot low and wonderful hands. She's made a sub. From Emily McGrogan. 
eagle-eyed Jen Gray has noticed that Town have made a sub. Who have we got? Uh, Trying to work out who Ella that Harry's is. Ella Harris has been replaced by Alice Telling at right back. Alice Telling is on for Ella Harris at right back as Town with Emerson Evans down the left back, uh, down the left wing. Cuts inside to the edge of the 18-yard box, plays the ball across. Portishead are able to take control of that and work the ball forward. Lovely interception from Alice Bowden, who's able to nip forward, nip in and play the ball out to Gypsy Vivash, who seems to be playing in a more advanced position down the left-hand side. Jen, am I reading this right? Have Town gone to three at the back? Or is, is that because Gypsy seems to be playing in a more advanced position on the left-hand side? I think Gypsy's probably just been told to get on a bike up a bit and then Tells will play as a tighter sort of three and they'll shuffle round while Gypsy moves forward. But I think she'll still do the defensive duties. As a free kick is given away by Swindon Town right on the halfway line, just a couple of yards inside the Swindon Town half, in fact, which will be taken by Portis Heads number 16. And excuse us for our partisan nature of our commentary, ladies and gents. We're not going to bother trying to tell you their names as well. Um, why would we, eh? Yeah. No, need. No, need. no need. No need. No need, as Portis Head, <laughs> Portis yeah. Head play a long... Um, arrowed um, uh, free kick to the edge of the Swindon Town 18-yard box and they're able to clear it um, and it's dropped to Gypsy Vivash in the left-back position as Gypsy moves down the left-hand side and again there's that lovely little pass that Gypsy Vivash played early in the first half and Emerson Evans looks to beat a man flick it on the inside but can't quite connect with a Swindon Town shirt inside the 18-yard box as the Portis head goalkeeper plays long and wide down the right-hand side and Alice Bowden is challenging, but the ball's not. Looked like it was going to go out for a frame, but the ball's carried through. Swindon have retained possession and they've worked it inside to Mia Mugford. Mugford, nice footwork. Great strength from Mia Mugford. Oh, that's a lovely bit of play from Mugford who flicks it on the inside and Emerson Evans hasn't quite got enough in the tank to get on the end of that. And the Portis head goalkeeper is able to dance out to the edge of her 18-yard box pluck the ball off the attacking toe of um, Emerson Evans and bowl it out into the right-back position. Um, after much jiggery pokery, the ball's gone out for a Portis head throw-in. So, yeah, the pace, Ellis, is much like we've had in the first half. Yeah. Again, it's all a bit scrappy, all a bit untidy. But you can see, I mean, some nice touches from Mia Mugford as Town are looking to get control of the midfield areas, get a little bit more control on the game. Yeah. Again, there's a lovely little touch from um, uh, Town in the centre midfield position. As they arrow a long ball forward, but again, it's a little bit aimless. But Annie Colston has an opportunity, but the goalkeeper's able just to nick it off of Colston's toe and clear it out for a Swindon Town throw in on the left hand side. I would say Swindon are the better side here, um, but like you touched on, Hannah's this either side is sort of stroke, they're both struggling to gain possession. It, it feels to me, Jen that if they're to find their way back into this game, it's going to be a long ball over the top and a lapse in concentration or a silly, silly error in a defensive position. I can't see Portishead actually playing themselves into this game. I haven't seen enough quality from Portishead today. Absolutely not. No, there, there haven't been many sort of strings of passes going on. There's no sort of real play. It's just over the top and try and get in. It'll de yeah. So as Colston goes down, just adjusting her shoelaces and there's a free kick on the left-hand side to Portis head with Colston back up on her toes. The referee is waved uh, for play to continue and Portis heads number 18 in the left-back position. Surprise, surprise, bangs it long and down the line and the ball's put out of play by Alice Telling in the right-back position. Um, Portis head advanced to the halfway line when the ball is thrown back into play over the top of Sky Hull who is able to tow that out for a a Portis head throw in the Swindon Town final defensive third. No support or urgency down that end of the ground right. to retrieve the ball. So we're going to have another little break in play. Um, it was interesting the um, talking about the Vivash family lineage with some supporters over there at yeah. half-time, Jen. Yeah, we've managed to uh, rub shoulders with Swindon Town supporting and playing uh, royalty in the Vivash family. It was always nice to catch up and they're predicting a tidy 3-1 win for Swindon, you'll be oh, pleased to know. Pretty similar As to me then. Portis said, take control on the right side of the 18-yard box and they shoot high and over the top of the Swindon Town goal. Angle of post and crossbar and McGrogan nonchalantly saunters behind her goal, picks the ball up, and gets ready to place it for another place kick. 
So some some light instruction from Mike Cook on the right hand side as he's preparing what looks like Lucy Durham for a substitute appearances uh, appearance as Lane Diaz Butcher uh, is replaced um, by uh, so 14 minutes into uh, the second half and Lane Diaz Butcher is substituted. Uh, Lucy Durham has come on there. It looks like Lucy. Emerson Evans has immediately switched to the right hand side with what looks like Lucy operating, Lucy Durham operating down the left hand side. No change to the central position for Annie Colston. So um, straight swap. And it's interesting. So I'm guessing the instruction there is going to be for um, Emerson to get down the right hand side. Um, again, pretty much, oh, it's a ball over the top to Annie Colston, but that's cut out by Portis Head, who agriculturally clear it for a throw in. I think it'll be interesting to see. I think Emerson will be able to get a bit more luck with first-time crosses down the right-hand side. She's sort of cutting it back a bit more on the left to try and then get it in. So, Alice Tellin throws the ball in to uh, Mia Mugford, who's not able to control and port his head, take control on the edge of the 18-yard box as Colston battles for possession. Oh, Emerson Evans even battles for possession. And the ball... It's played beautifully down the line by Paul Chester. Uh, kid kind of called him Paul Chester. Paul his head. Um, Town managed to um, uh, clear their lines. And Mugford has possession, plays it into central midfield position. They've worked it neatly out to Meg Attenborough, who plays a lovely pass over the top to Lucy Durham. Doesn't quite carry, however. Durham is able to get hold of possession as Vivash progresses down the right-hand side. Some lovely footwork from Jesse Vivash, who then loses possession, lunges in. But Portis said are able to clear down the line. Bourne Hallett with um, a tough tackle uh, on the Portis head central midfielder. Again, the ball ricocheting around, finds its way back to Sky Hole, who works it back to goalkeeper McGrogan. McGrogan almost immediately returns the ball upfield to Mia Mugford, who heads it on to Meg Attenborough, who uses her body strength brilliantly and a lovely touch inside for the reverse pass. Out to Mugford, who plays it first time into Emerson oh. Evans, who's got the pace on the Portis head defender. But Evans' final touch has sent the ball out for a Portis head goal kick. Oh, some good football there for Swindon. She's working her socks off, Emerson Evans, isn't she, today? You can see the bright red face. She's really blowing. As the Portis head keeper shapes up for a place kick, uh, the keeper sends a high ball straight down the centre of the field. Portis head are able to get there first, get a nice little touch, but doesn't find a Portis head header. Again, ball ricocheting around the um, midfield positions, down to the left-back position, and Portis Head just immediately bang it long, um, putting pressure on um, Alice Bowden in centre-back. But the ball's broken. The ball, Hallett, who plays a delicious through ball over the top to Lucy Durham on Swindon Town's right-hand side. Durham crosses low and hard, and the ball is cleared out for what should be a Swindon Town corner. But the referee, I don't know what he's seen, but the ref has given a place kick which is a quite bizarre decision that quite clearly came off of a Swindon, t- uh, off of a uh, Portis head uh, defender and cleared out for a corner. Uh, uh, but ball's back in play and he's sent down the line. Um, it's hot midway now into the Swindon Town defensive half and it's rolled out of play for a throw in, which will be taken on the left hand side by Gypsy Vivash, who throws long down the line. Meg Attenborough attempts to get a touch, uh, flick the ball on, uh, but can't quite make that happen. It's gone out for a Portis head throw in. Portis head throw infield. Um, looking to work the ball down their right hand side. There's a nice little through ball to the Portis head winger. McGrogan comes careering out of a goal, and the ball was carried all the way through handily for a Swindon Town goal kick. I mean, how typical is this? Jen, for, for Swindon Town performances this season to, to be this sort of scrappy. Is this sort of more an indication of Portishead and the level of opposition we're playing, or is this a representation of the standard that the team are at? Like, what are we seeing no, here definitely, today? Definitely, definitely not. You know, I think there are certain games where we know it's going to be a scrappy game, um, and you've just got to sort of get into it and do what you have to do. Um, but, yeah, no, it's, it's not a normal sort of gameplay for us. I think I, there have been games this season where you've seen us play such good football, sort of up, back and through, loads of passing, lots of possession. Um, and I think that's the issue today is is it's so back and forth that no one's got any possession to sort of play nice football. 
And you and you can see, obviously, Mike talked a lot before the game, didn't he, in his exclusive interview with us on the Sir Tom Broadbent Lounge, that um, there is uh, an intention where, you know, we said about it in the first half, where there is an intention to get the ball forward where necessary yeah. and put pressure on on defences. Um We've been very, very quick to go long. And likewise, Portis said, it's almost like they've yeah. got the same instructions. So you've got this almost yeah. like a, a, I don't want to call it head tennis because there's not many headers, but you just got this ball being returned and yeah. returned and returned. And like, it's not, it's not going out of play. It's, it's hard to, com hard to commentate it on. And it's low on quality at the moment, isn't it? it? Is. As Town break down I the left-hand think... side with Lucy Durham again, a lovely little flick to, uh, touch from Lucy Durham to try and retain possession, but they can't quite do it. And the ball's flicked out of play. On the left-hand side, midway into the Portishead defensive half, Durham takes a throw in, um, looking to um, engineer an opportunity for Annie Colston. Um, can't quite make that work. And again, Portishead are able to clear their lines and they're looking to break on Swindon Town down the left-hand side here at Foundation Park. But there's a bit too much on that pass. And the ball has gone out for a Swindon Town throw, which Alice Telling sends up the line to Emerson Evans. Lovely touch from Meg Attenborough again. who looks to spread the ball wide. Um, to uh, the town, le uh, town attacking left-hand side, but Durham can't quite get there and pulled his header back in possession. Some love lovely uh, challenge from um, Rianne Bourne-Hallett in the central midfield position, restored today to a preferred position. And again, Town are able to retain play down the left-hand side. Ball over the top, which Durham can't quite get to, and it's going to roll out for a Portis head throw about 10 yards up from the corner flag on the right-hand side, as someone over there seems to be doing the YMCA, uh, drawing attention to something or other that the referee hasn't seen. Can't quite work out what it is. Maybe he's just waving to us yeah. because our broadcast media is reaching the many, many, many millions <laughs> of Swindon Town fans around the world. It's the ball's worked down the right-hand side um, but uh, by Swindon Town. But again, straight to a white shirt, Portishead were able to retain possession as... Mugford tanks into the back of a Portishead central midfielder. There's no short, no shortage of physicality amongst the Swindon Town team, Jen, is there? Absolutely like, not. like the girls really do put themselves about. There's no shrinking violets out there, is there? Absolutely not, no. Um, how nice is it to see Rianne Bourne Hallett again still out there as we go like 20, so what are we, about 20 minutes into the second half now. So we're approaching the midway point in the second half. And again, it's another, um, you know, gutsy display from Town's um, club captain. She's been in, in amongst the mix. Um, following a return from um, having a child. It's good to see Rianne out there and giving a full-bloody performance as the ball's lofted over the top and carries all the way through to McGrogan. Let's see what Emily does here. I think we know what Emily's going to do here. Curse to the commentator. Hello. She decides to go short. And a throw has made it all the way through to Vivash down the left-hand side. Vivash plays a high arcing yeah. through ball, which Portishead are able to get a toe on. But there are Swindon bodies forward and they're engineering possession, which they have on the left-hand side with Lucy Durham. Durham plays it down the line. And Bourne Hallett's got it on the right hand side. She cuts inside, but a little bit too much on her part, on her um, on her touch, and the ball was able to roll through to uh, Portishead. Apologies if I sound a little broken <laughs> in our uh, in my commentary, but we've got about four. You think you have a problem in the town? Then trying to trying to watch a game of football with our struts. I've got about twenty in front of me here, due to our position behind the Portishead goal, almost 10, 12 feet behind the goal. But we're looking through mesh green fencing, which does tend to mess with the old optics a little yeah. bit. It's giving me a bloody headache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all of town's play typically is coming down the left-hand side where we've got to kind of try and squint our way through this, this green iron fencing. Uh, I don't think the goalkeeper's going to like it much if we go and sit cross-legged behind a goal and try and comment, commentate in the second, second half. Uh, without that obstructed view. She won't like the comments we made about her in the first half. No, no, no. She, no, she really wouldn't. And uh, I'm going to try and watch my manners in the second half to not cause any kind of offence. As Town battling for possession in central midfield position, but a high hand um, from, um, I believe that was Meg Attenborough. Tory Taylor, Tory Taylor um, has uh, given a free kick to Portishead in the centre midfield position. So, we missed that substitution. I, did, yeah, I was just about to say, I'll be honest, I didn't even see Tory come on, Hannah. Was that a half-time substitution I, for I Tory Taylor? So, this is the... This is, unfortunately, this is one of the... That's a lovely catch high. as a high-looping free kick from Portishead has popped up towards Emily McGrogan's back stick. McGrogan, yeah. again, has looped up, taking a lovely clean catch. 
and um, been able to send the ball almost immediately upfield. And there's a really nice touch forward from Annie, Annie Colston. Oh, and there's an opportunity here from Emily, uh, from Emerson Evans. But um, <laughs> Coco, Coco was that, Jen Gray scares, scares the life out of her commentary, commentating uh, counterparts. Sat to her left. And, um, me and Mugford has gone off for Tory Taylor, so it must have happened as we were talking, discussing fences. Ah, uh, there we go. So yes, so Mugford has slipped off. Tory Taylor has come into um, uh, central midfield, and uh, Portis had have worked the ball down the left hand side, but missed control, and the ball was rolled out for a Swindon Town goal kick, which will again be taken by Emily McGrogan. I've got. I've got an ominous feeling. I don't mind telling you, Jen. This has got a feeling. One of those games where, if they're not careful, if they, if if they don't either get hold of this ball and get a little bit more control in midfield areas, or get a second goal, we could be in a bit of trouble here. As a great ball from Tory Taylor over the left, over the back, over the left, um, the Porter says left back position has put Porter said under a bit of control under, under a bit of uh, pressure. Uh, Swindon aren't able to uh, wrestle possession off of Portishead, however, and it's been knocked out of play for a Portishead, uh, sorry, for a Swindon Town throw-in, which will be taken by Lucy Durham. Durham throws in field to Andy Colson, attempts to use her strength, but a foul throw has been given against Durham in the Portishead left-back position. The ball's then bowled over arm back to Portishead. Portis said return the ball back into play. Meg Attenborough shows great strength, drives the ball forward, and he's got a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, Annie Colston, but the Portis said goalkeeper is able to nip out and take control of the football. Goalkeeper plays it long, straight down the centre of the field. As uh, Portis said again, take possession just inside their defensive D on the halfway line. Um, and have played a nice ball out wide to the right-hand side, which is Fred, Fred Infield. And mopped up by Sky Hole and sent straight back down the field with interest by McGrogan as Annie Colston shows her experience to head the ball through. Emerson Evans, who goes one on one with the Portis head goalkeeper, hasn't quite got the ball under control. And some smart goalkeeping from the Portis head stopper, who's able to run out, uh, to slide out and nip the ball off Emerson Evans' toe. And you're just willing one of those opportunities to go in for town. You sort of sense that second goal is going to be really, really important. As the game approaches the thirty, um, uh, th as the game approaches its final third, you know, again some lovely strong play from Meg Attenborough in midfield, and the ball ricochets through to the Portis head goalkeeper. So again, it's that it's that frantic pace, yeah, isn't it, Ellis? But there's no there's no real quality on show. No. Nobody's really like getting hold of the ball, bossing the ball. But there's just attack. There is this relentless attacking intent from both teams. Yeah. It's like watching a game of tennis as opposed yeah. to a game of football, isn't it? Hundred percent. And you know, being what being one nil, there it is. Um, Swindon really run the risk of uh, you know concede, conceding the goal, and then you, you draw it. Then that's you've lost out on two points. About two extra points. Yeah, and and obviously Town's recent Town's recent form um, is is you know is not particularly great in latter stages. Jen, is there? I mean, we've um, we've had a couple of late collapses this season, uh, which Town need to guard against. Um, when you've had those, I don't like to bring up bad memories, Jen, but when you've had those late collapses, as the as as town get a free kick up wide on the left the left hand side, it's looped high and into the box, and the Porter's head header, and the ball crashes off the Porter's head bar, which is then cleared. Uh, but I mean, that was a defensive header which is looped up and off of the Porter's head bar from a Rian Bourne Hallett free kick. Um, but Jen, I was about to say those late collapses that Town have suffered. How much of that has been down to fitness, and how much has that been down to just rotten luck? And ah, uh, it, it's a bit of both, Hannah. As I think, you know, you, some of the teams we've played against, it's clear that they are fitter than us, and that we need to put some work in there. Um, and you know, many of the girls are, and others, it, it, it's a lapse of concentration as well. You know, mm. you are sort of sat comfortably, and and you do get comfortable. And then, with, and ten just minutes, and then off. with two minutes to go, you think, oh, it's nearly done. And, and then you suffer for that. And, yeah. and I think, again, that sort of lack of experience where we need to learn to be able to cope with those situations. As Emerson oh. Evans battles away on the left-hand side, and that battling away has resulted in Meg Attenborough taking possession, but she can't quite maintain it. 
and Porter said are able to re- wrestle possession back themselves and they're now working down the left back position, uh, down the left flank rather, um, as uh, Alice Telling um, advances forward and is played around and Porter's head again, lose possession. Swindon Towns thump it oh, forward well and uh, this Lucy Durham with a lovely little pass out to Emerson Evans on the right hand side. Evans is looking to take on the Porter's head. Uh, put his head left back. No cross was the instruction from the goalkeeper. No cross indeed. And the defender's done a splendid job in playing the ball off of Evans and out for a Swindon, uh, for a put his head goal kick. Lots of lots of hands on hips as I'm glancing around. Emerson looks like she's uh, she's uh, sort of essentially running on vapor. Looking tired now. Yep, as you know, again. She's been working hard. Um... Port's head go long from their goal kick. Port's head are able to get hold of the ball in the midfield position. The ball goes wide, left hand side. Port's head looking to attack. They cut inside and they shoot from distance. A big deflection and a fantastic save from Emily McGrogan. That's what we're talking about. And that is not an easy stop for any goalkeeper, any standard. The, the strikers unleash that from about 18 yards. It's taken a big deflection on its way through. Bounced up just in front of Emily. And she's been able to tip the ball around the post with two hands. The ball was travelling, Ellis, wasn't it? Real smart yeah. stop. And a corner for Portishead. And, and it, Emily's uh, been been a big, big player in, in, in today's game. I now, think you, you have another keeper in there. You could have easily have conceded another two. Yeah, I'm, and I'm pleased to say with the Portishead goalkeeper now advanced almost to the halfway line, that is the sort of chance I would have expected a lesser goalkeeper what we're looking at now to have flapped into the back of her net. The town have got to keep their composure here as there's a big high corner lop- uh, lofted to the back stick and Swindon head back into their own six yard box and McGrogan's able to come command their box and catch and there's a fantastic uh, goal kick out from McGrogan and that's gone out to Emerson Evans who again can't quite muscle the ball off of the port said left back. And Porter said are able to take control. Goalkeeper um, out to centre midfielder, worked out to the right hand side. And Porter said have played a very smart ball down the right hand side. And McGrogan again, lovely little feint that she's going to send it down the line. And then just gives the gives the winger the eyes and the ball rolls through for a place kick. But what are you saying? If you're Mike Cook now, what are you saying to the girls out there? I mean, I know what I'm saying to them. I'll be saying to them, can't just try and calm down, slow the game down, yeah. get control of the football. But I think what... that, that would be my hopes of bringing someone like Tori Taylor on. I, I want to see her controlling this game, sort of getting it back under control, getting everyone calm and getting on the ball. Mm. Um, so far, we haven't done that yet, though. Mm. Lots of attacking, um, lots of attacking quality yeah. out on the pitch for Swindon Towns. We look across the. Um, as we look around, as we look across the pitch, lots of attacking intent in keeping with the pattern of the game so far. Both teams have um, have, have just shown a willingness to. Um, it's like watching an old Rocky film, this, where you've got Rocky slugging, Apollo slugging, Rocky slugging, to use a boxing analogy for you here, Ellis. It literally <laughs> is like watching a Rocky movie, isn't it? Watching these two teams going at each other. Yeah. Great for the neutral, not so great if you're a purist. 100%. And this game can still go any way, couldn't it? As yeah. the ball breaks, Emerson Evans plays a really smart ball out wide to Annie Colston on the right-hand Taylor, side. Emerson. Annie Colston's being marshaled by the... Oh, that's a lovely turn inside by Colston, who opens up an opportunity to shoot. Hello, and the Portishead Taylor. keeper's able to save low down to her left-hand side and run as far away from your commentary team as she possibly can before sending her drop kick, uh, or oh, a poor drop kick, straight to Rianne Bourne Hallett, who heads it forward to Lucy Durham, can't quite take control. And Portishead break with their very impressive number 16, who seems to have been all over the pitch today. It looks to split the um, uh, channel between centre-half, left, right centre-half and right back for Swindon Town. The Town take control of the ball, centre midfield position through Meg Attenborough, who plays it upfield to Emerson Evans, who's battling with the left back. Evans plays it inside to Lucy Durham. Durham plays it inside. It's very compact. Tory Taylor lofts a high ball through to Lucy Durham, who can't quite get a touch to enable her to... Um, I mean, there's a sure sign that the two teams are tired when a defender just randomly goes goes and po- pokes a toe. It's gone, Ed. It's gone. And there's a corner ball for Swindon Town. And I'm not sure. It was that, already gone. I'm not sure Emerson realised that was going for a corner. Um, but the corner is going to be taken by club captain Rianne Bourne Hallett. I tried to tell you. 
big smiles from Emerson Evans um, as Rian Bourne Hallett looks to take a corner uh, over to our left hand side. Town packing the box. Um, Alice Bowden putting a lot of pressure um, on the Portishead goalkeeper as the ball's lofted over. Free header for Evans. It bounces for Tory Taylor, who's able to play it wide again to Rian Bourne Hallett, who takes a touch before looking to get a crossover. She can't quite. And she forces another corner from the Portishead left back. Lots of frustration being aired as we look around the port. It's had lots of furrow brows. Um, Go town. Lots of red shirts. Tory Taylor um, marshalling the attacking options. High ball into the box. Annie Colston can't quite get ahead on it as the ball breaks to Alice Bowden on the right-hand side. Shows great strength. Works the ball out wide right to Meg Attenborough. Plays it inside to Alice Bowden. Bowden forward in an attacking position. Ironically, Emerson Evans, lovely touch. Drag back. Opens an opportunity on the right-hand side. Shoots low. And the goalkeeper is able to catch just inside a six-yard box. So the goalkeeper there has actually carried the ball three, four yards outside her 18-yard box before she's actually kicked it. But she's given the benefit of the doubt from the referee, strangely. Um as Alice Bowden, centre-back, again in an advanced position, has managed to flip the ball over to Emerson Evans on the right-hand side, who can't control, and Portishead are now working the ball downtown's right-hand side, the attacking left-hand side, and Sky Hull has flicked the ball out for a Portishead corner. Now, there's something about corners in Swindon Town this season, Ellis. Well, it's, it's, it yeah. feels like the last four or five years, in yeah. fact. Let's see if the women have got sterner stuff about them yeah. when it comes to defending corners um, and slim uh, slim score lines oh, such as we've got today. Last week. Oh, dear. So, as the ball's lofted high into the 18-yard yeah, box, yeah. but Town are able to clear um, through Meg Attenborough, um, who works it to Alice, on, uh, to uh, Annie Colson, who plays a fantastic ball over the top to Emerson Evans. On, Emerson. She's battling to get there and she's beating the goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper has found Emerson Evans right on the edge of the 18-yard box. And the referee is calling the goalkeeper over. He's already got the yellow card in his hand. The goalkeeper did indeed appear to be the last man. Porter said defenders are protesting and the goalkeeper is given a yellow card. And a free kick right on the edge of the Porter's head 18-yard box. Lots of smiles from the Swindon Town ladies as they take up their attacking positions. Um all being marshalled and instructed by the very experienced Tory Taylor as the equally experienced Rianne Bourne Hallett is giving instructions. It's looking like she's going to look to look to bend the free kick towards the back stick where the mass of Swindon Town shirts are. Bourne Hallett on the left-hand side then to take the free kick. Lots of movement from Lucy Durham pulling the markers around. There's a high free kick to the back post and it drops just over the top of the crossbar, literally a matter of inches over the top of angle of post and crossbar, top right-hand corner. And a Portis, Portis head will breathe a sigh of relief. Short goal Something kick. Different. Mm. Short goal kick from the goalkeeper out to the right-back for Portis head, who looks to work it down the line but can't. And the ball is blocked out for a Portis head. Throw in around the halfway line. Portis head's number two plays it inside and town. Um, are able to um, clear their defensive lines and the ball is back out for a Portis head throw. So, might so an appearance from Charlie soon. Continuation of, yeah, as Charlie Rowlands looks like, she's getting herself stripped and ready uh, to make another appearance. As Annie Colston is being encouraged by manager Mike Cook to take her on, quote, down the right-hand side, low cross, and it's blocked. By the Portis head centre half cl claims of handball from the overly optimistic town dugout. Lots of smiles. Um, so again, lovely attacking play. So a deep cross from Annie Colston it, to the right hand side. Meg Attenborough Mom. over in the far corner for Swindon Town. One on one with the number fourteen oh, Portis head, and Meg's beaten and she's gone oh, great. Oh, and Attenborough can't quite find a Swindon body in the 18-yard box, but she's retained possession and the ball hammers off the woodwork. Again, angle, post and bar. Town have hit the woodwork again. Some fantastic footwork by Meg Attenborough. Fantastic display she had a smile on her face of strength. As she took it past the Porter's head defender. Brilliant in here. And that little knock past yeah. the defender, ran out, set it for herself. That was fantastic. 
yeah. Lovely, um, lovely display of close control and tenacity from Meda Meg Attenborough. As Porter said, get ready to take a free kick whilst Town have made a substitution. It looks like the substitute has gone off. It looks like we've lost Lucy Durham, who's been replaced. Who looks? Who looks... She was. She's been struggling with injury during the week, uh, so there's a potential that that is the reason why that she's gone off now. She looks very distressed over in the dugout. It's got to be said, very, very red faced and teary by looks of things, and. Um, Charlie Rowlands has now come in on the left-hand side for town. I, I can't... I, I'd be surprised if it was any other reason. I mean, Emerson looks like she's oh, She's absolutely it. furious, Lucy. She's absolutely furious. She's throwing her kit down. She's really, really frustrated. She's got heavily, heavily strapped right ankle that yeah. I think you're referring to, Jen. That's exactly it, yeah. And it looks yeah. like it's been a reoccurrence of that injury, which has been troubling her during the week. It's unfortunate. So town, we town fans get to uh, a glimpse of recent signing from Forest Green Rovers, a re-signing Charlie Rowlands as Alice Teller looks to play the ball Charlie. in on the right side. Lovely turn from Annie Colston, who lashes a shot three, four yards above the crossbar. And Paul's head live another day. But town are turning the screw here, Jen, aren't they? The superior yeah. quality is really starting to show. We've stepped it up a notch now, I think. Uh, we're really starting to sort of get the ball down a little bit more and play a little bit of football, which is good to see. Uh, lovely touch on the port. He said right winger. Um, lovely little display of skill. Takes out two or three town players. And they've advanced halfway into the town defensive half and won themselves another throw-in um, off of uh, Rian bourne Hallett as they work the ball down into the far corner of the pitch. Lovely turn and piece of skill again from the impressive um, uh, Portishead um, attacker on the right-hand side. And the ball ricochets off of Bourne Hallett again for a throw-in. Corner. Oh, it's gone out for a corner. Sorry, we are right down the other end here, folks. It's the equi- this is the equivalent of being in the town end and the corner's down the other end of the Stratton Bank as they flash a corner across and the ball was headed two or three yards over the town bar and and that's always a good indication of the away support because that would normally have got a (laughs) but there was no ooh which tells you there's a pretty pretty much partisan support here at the county ground today at foundation park and if you're not here ask yourself why aren't you here dear listener get get off your buns and get down there and support your women's team who was wonderful to introduce you to, uh, introduce to you all on the county ground pitch yesterday um, and see such a rousing um, round of applause for them all on their lap of honour. As Town have got uh, possession in the right wing position as Emerson Evans looks to chip the goalkeeper from 25 yards out. And the goalkeeper is able to backpedal and um, take control. And the goalkeeper flicks a... Um, goal kick out wide to the right-hand side, but just gone straight out of play. And it's really starting to feel now that Town's superior quality and fitness is starting to show because all the chances sort of feel like they're happening at this end. And they're all coming down this left-hand side as well, which is surprising when you consider the change in personnel and the fact that Charlie Rowlands isn't a natural left winger. Um, more of a number nine figure. Yeah. Um, but all the chances continue to be engineered down the left-hand side for Town, Jen, at the moment. Yeah, 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 they are. Hopefully... You know, Charlie's out of position, but I'm sure she can do the job out there and get her something from out wide. As uh, Town, again, yeah. some lovely footwork from Annie Colston. It opens up an opportunity inside the 18-yard box. One-on-one with the goalkeeper squares it. And there's an opportunity for Mary Attenborough. And Paul, she said, have been able to block it six yards out. But it was a wonderful opportunity. Again, fantastic footwork from Annie Colston showing that she is classes above this level if we're really, really honest with ourselves. Wonderful stuff from Annie. As Town looks to take position in the left-back position, um, Gypsy Vivash is beaten. Um, and Portishead have got a really good attacking opportunity in the right wing position. They cross and there's a big break and a big opportunity. And that really, you've got to be doing better. That's the sort of position. If that falls to Annie Colston in a red shirt, that's in the back of the net all day Absolutely. long. That's probably Portishead's best position. So, lovely attacking break down the left hand side. Gypsy Vivash caught out of um, caught out of position. A big ball over the top. Fantastic cross from the Portishead right winger, who's been really impressive against Gypsy Vivash all game long. And it's fallen to Portishead centre forward. Lots of goal to aim for, and she has arrowed a shot up and over the bar. Great contact, but maybe a bit of a rush finish. 
and Town survive another day. So it's just a little warning sign there for Swindon Town that this Portishead side aren't quite done just yet. It looks as though Charlie and Annie have had a little switch up top as well. Annie's sort of out on the left-hand side now with Charlie taking over in the centre. Yeah, that's quite clearly obvious as Annie picks it up in the left-wing back position and arrows a pass over to the right-wing position where Emerson Evans is battling to keep the ball in play for Town, which she has. So Emerson working the ball down the right-hand side. Take her to the outside, says the goalkeeper. Take her to the outside, she does, says the left back. And the ball is put out of play. And Emerson Evans is now Cramp. cramping up, unsurprisingly. <laughs> I don't know if she's laughing or she, grimacing. I think, I think there's a bit of laugh, <laughs> laugh or cry moment there, Hannah. So uh, Meg Attenborough is doing the juices, stretching the cramped leg. Yeah, there's lots of mirth, lots of smiles and um, lots of encouragement for young Emerson Evans, as they oh, as, as soon as she goes to straighten her leg again, her, her calf muscle goes into cramp. She's putting a massive shift, Jen, isn't I, I she? Think we could a see massive that. shift. About to happen, yeah. I'm a little bit concerned standing up with you here. I'm 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 a portly boy these days, Jen. I'm a portly boy, and I don't want this. This could be embarrassing for us both if this I'm, breaks. I'm getting overexcited here. So no, it's good. I, I prefer this view. This is much better. Now I do feel like I'm in my natural habitat at the back of the town end. This feels a little bit better now. Towering we're in, a, now we're in an right elevated right. position up here. As 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 Emerson Evans is. There we um, go. She's back on her feet. She'll she'll she'll, di- she'll digest her uh, her electrolyte drink, and she's up and she's running, and Alice telling has thrown the ball in, edge of the 18-yard box. Charlie Rowland's battling for it, battling to retain possession, but she can't do so. And the ball is played down the left-hand side. Oh, yes, Terry. And Town are able to keep that in play. Alice Telling with a lovely bit of play, um, which is giving Annie Colston, the op- uh, Emerson Evans, the opportunity to wrestle for possession. And the referee has given a free kick, which pours his head play diagonally across the field. And Alice Bowden is able to intercept and play forward. Um, again, high agricultural play. And the referee's given a rather light foul, shall we say politely, against Alice Bowden. Um, whilst Megan, Megan Attenborough had a big opportunity to break just inside the Portis head half. Portis head long and high. And Gypsy Vivash is able to head down the line um, and back towards the um, Portis head right back position. Free kick given against Town. Um, and Portis Head have got an opportunity on the edge of the 18 yard box a, a turn and shot and Rianne Bourne Hallett is able to block and the ball bounces out of play for a Portis Head throw in Portis Head in possession on the right hand side looking to work the ball down the line Portis Head play a high cross into the box and there's a flicked header which comes off of a Swindon Town defender but handily straight into the arms of Emily McGrogan who was prowling on the edge of her 6 yard box but again, Portis said just showing they've still got a bit in the tank. They've still got opportunities to um, cause town problems in their uh, uh, in in their attacking departments as the ball's played long for town down the left hand side, which is where town have been getting a lot of joy in this second half. And Charlie Rhodes is happy to see that roll out <laughs> roll out of play. And a long throw in from town, which Rollins is able to flick onto Annie Colston down the left-hand side. She takes it to the byline. Smart footwork from Annie Colston. Retains possession. Opportunity on the edge of the box. And a shot from Charlie Rollins, which spins up. And the goalkeeper is able to dive low to the left-hand side and take control. And once again, the goalkeeper's carried the ball two, three yards out of her 18-yard box. There can't be many more opportunities of getting away with that. The referee's got to have his attention drawn to it. I'm, I'm Jen, that's that's you. about the third that's, that's about the third opportunity that I've seen now, Jen, where that I don't goalkeeper. Know how the missing it, the, but... Yeah, I mean, there's some real leniency being shown there against the visiting goalkeeper today. I mean, that's real basics if you're a assistant referee. Real basics, yeah. you've got to be like keeping an eye on that. But they're letting play run. As Porty said, I've got an opportunity now. 18 yards from goal, shoot oh. low, and a oh, great save for McGrogan. But it's broken to Porty's head's right winger. And she's been able to tap home. And that's so cruel. That is so cruel on Swindon Town. And McGrogan's in some discomfort as well. Full stretch down to her left-hand side, uh, bottom left-hand corner. Big hand to it. But that's what we've been talking about, Jen, isn't it? It's exactly that, Hannah. It's exactly that. How long's left to play? Well, oh, it's heartbreak. It's right at the death. It is right at the death. 
And it is just a little bit of that, isn't it? Like they just switched off. It's one, it's one lapse of concentration. Defensively, right? just switched off in the sort of right centre back, right back position, and the strikers found themselves in acres of um, acres of space. She's drilled a shot low to Emily McGrogan's bottom left hand corner. McGrogan's pulled off an absolute wonder save, but could only return the ball back towards the onrushing right winger, who's able to essentially force the ball over the line. Um, and, and Portishead, <sighs> Portishead are going to probably feel like they're coming away from this game with uh, a share of the spoils, which I think they'll probably think is fair. I, I, I think they'll be happy with that. I, I don't think it's fair, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think if think you're of a Swindon fair. Town persuasion, you're yeah. going to be very, very frustrated. Town have threatened in this second half. Town have hit the woodwork on a couple of occasions. They forced one or two smart stops from the goalkeeper. Um I think if you're Porter's head, you'd be over the moon to go away with the point. Yeah, well, we're a little bit concerned about this. We're a bit of a jinx when it comes to Emily. So at the county grounds, we uh, we're obviously there when Emily's uh, pulled up um, with a nasty looking knee injury, and now we're, Emily's been down for quite a while now, receiving attention from the uh, Swindon Town physio, and it looks like, and the way that she dived and the way that she's um, landed as well. That's always going to be a concern, possible shoulder injury and a possible dislocation. Um, and judging by the treatment that the physio has given Emily, there's a lot of attention to that right shoulder. So looking at, um, at Grace Kazir, she's stripping off and getting ready to come on from a Grogan by the look of it. Emily's still down. And the way that the elbow is tucked in on her right-hand side here might suggest that she's got a real problem. She went, the dive, it was a, it was a full stretch dive and, that shoulder will have taken oh, she's the... Lifting her arm. oh yeah, she's managed to get it up in the air. But that that's um that shoulder has taken the full brunt of that impact as she's gone down. So Kazir's been given instructions to strip off. Gloves are going on. It's looking like this is a substitution that's going to be made. McGrogan's still down, still quite obviously in discomfort. And well, there's it's disappointing because it's literally right at the end of the game. Yeah, it's it's late heartbreak again for Swindon Town, isn't it? Late in the game, late late heartbreak. Um, and it's really been it's those defensive lapses where Town have just been punished these last few games. You know, these last few weeks, and you know, call it the opposition that they played recently. Southampton were a class above this Portis head side. This yeah. is not a good Portis head side. Southampton were far better than this slot. Um, Exeter, top of the league, running away with it. Um, this feels like a, a little bit of a smash and grab, actually, on reflection. I think the game's ebbed and flowed, but Town have really turned the screw in his second half. It's been all Swindon Town, particularly down this left-hand side. Port, Portishead will be travelling back to the North Somerset coast. They'll be, uh, they'll be feeling like they've won the lottery today, won't they? Yeah. Um, Emily's staying on. She's not been taken off. Yeah, Kazir's sat back down. She's got a bib uh, back on. Grace Kazir, substitute goalkeeper as town. Immediately go long down the right-hand side. Emerson Evans being asked to put pressure on the Portishead head left back who can't quite clear her lines. And Evans has got a, a throw-in, which she looks to loop over the top of the um, of the uh, Portishead head left back. Em- Emerson Evans cuts inside, but she's not able to find a swing in town shirt. And Portishead head have got a break on down the left-hand side. Oh! which Alice Telling is able to put out for a Swindon Town throw. So the tempo and noise around the pitch is noticeably lifted as Megan Attenborough plays inside to Annie Colston. Colston takes a touch, is able to turn, but can't quite get a break of the ball. A Portishead head have cleared out for a Swindon Town throw. So Town turning the screw in his final few moments of the game as Telling takes a free kick. Plenty of urgency uh, from the Swindon Town attacking options as they put the ball in. Um, Annie Colston putting um, Portishead number 14 under pressure. Emerson. Emerson Evans is able to shield the ball, looking to find Alice Telling um, in the right wing back position. But now Portishead have got a dangerous break on. And there's numbers for Portishead as it's threaded through. And that could have gone one on one, but Gypsy Vivash is back with some smart defending. Vivash plays a really nice ball over the top. Charlie Rowlands is through. And again, <laughs> this is literally like watching a game of tennis as Tory Taylor looks to take control in the central midfield position. And she does so. A nice little toe uh, oh through ball to Annie Colston. You can't quite get, get to that. And Portishead's impressive number 16 takes control in centre midfield, plays a through ball, um, which Portishead, some nice work from, again, their goal scorer, 
Um, wide on the right-hand side now. Portishead looking to work across. Can't quite get there. Cut inside. Left left field. Cr- uh, left-footed cross. And the ball is broken now for Town, who have got a break. And so, again, Annie, Annie Colston showing some great strength. And there's a professional go, fa- That's a professional up. foul, if ever you were looking to see one, Ellis. Yeah. A yellow card for Portis says number 18. Sweet with Annie Colston ready to make a break. They got it. They got it really Town looking to play a free kick. And Town looking to play a free kick um, early, which the referee has pulled back as... Um, Alice, uh, as Rianne Bourne Hallett looks to take control of this free kick on the uh, just inside the D, uh, just inside the D of the Portis head half. Really so, chance, yeah. yeah, this has got to be probably the last attacking move of the game. As Town line up, they're all lined up along the edge of the 18 yard box. Bourne Hallett with a free kick just inside, plays a long, high free kick over the top, which will carry all the way through, and there's nothing there. For no pressure on that whatsoever, as the goalkeeper's uh, kick is skewed out for a Swindon Town throw in about 10 yards inside the Swind- uh, the port- uh, Portis head half, long through down the line, but nobody challenging, not a red shirt anywhere near a white shirt. And this is where Swindon have got to be really careful because if they're going to give them opportunities to pick off passes, they might just find them. And Meg Attenborough, some brilliant work down the left hand side for Swindon Town, she's in a great crossing position, she beats her man. Great low cross that's got out for a Swindon Town. And Swindon Town are going to have a corner here at Foundation Park in the very, very closing stages of this game. The last, literally, gasp opportunity that you think Town are going to have here. And they're throwing everyone forward. Captain Alice Bowden immediately comes up and applies pressure to the fairly waifish character that is the Portishead goalkeeper as... Rianne Bourne Hallett looks to take the corner for Swindon Town. Tory Taylor, um, again, applying pressure. Lots of people piling in on the port. It's that goalkeeper. That's a great cross, putting the keeper under pressure. And it's hacked off the line. It's hacked off the line. Off the line, directly in front of us. And Town maintain possession on the right-hand side. Rianne Bourne Hallett plays it to the, to the left-back position. Colston with a flick header. But it's come off of Colston's shoulders and it's gone out for a Portis head goal. Kick. What drama at the Def Gen. Literally hacked mm. off the line. Honestly, Wonderful on, corner from Rianne Bourne Hallett that asked questions left, right and centre of that defensive lineup, And the ball's drop, looking like it was going to find its own way across the across the goal line organically. And they've managed to hack it clear. Oh, I think that... we needed to flood that goal line with a, with a corner like that. You know, it was coming in on the keeper and we just all needed to bundle on that. I, I, I guess the managers looked at this, Jen and gone. You know, listen, we're vulnerable. To, we've shown that we've been vulnerable to a break against this lot all game. You know, if we throw everyone into the box, are we leaving ourselves wide open? Maybe. I'm not quite sure. But again, we must be in the stoppage time now as Portis said, look, the break down the right hand side, but the ball carries all the way through to Emily McGrogan. And there is your final whistle. Well, late drama. Late drama at the county grounds. But ultimately. A frustrating scoreline of Swindon Town women one, Portis head one. Swindon Town opened the scoring early in the first half through Emerson Evans. Some neat link up play with Helena Diaz Butcher on the left hand side, attacking left hand side, right hand side of the defensive area. Um, Emerson Evans was able to cut in on her right foot and drill a low shot, which troubled the goalkeeper who flapped at it and the ball's bobbled in between her legs and straight into the back of the net for Swindon Town 1-0. The game was absolute carnage from there on in. It was like watching a game of tennis. Um, very, very low on quality in terms of possession of the football, uh, retention of the football, patterns of play, etc. Lots of long, uh, rakey passes, um, which didn't really seem to find their intended target. But um, about midway through the second half, um, Town started exerting more and more pressure turning on the quality and it looked like Town were going to be the likely winners and the second goal was was going to be on its way. But sadly, as the uh, half wore on, Portis head uh, grew in stature and in the last couple of minutes, Portis head were able to um, snatch an equaliser. Um, low drilled shot from the edge of the box. McGrogan palmed out. But unfortunately, the right winger was able to force across the line for 1-1. One, one. Well, very, very disappointing um, uh, final result. Right at the death town. 
managed to force a corner. Rianne Bourne Hallett has drifted the corner in. Um, a slight glance off of a Portishead header saw the ball. Looks like it was going to carry all the way across the goal line, but it didn't. We're going to try and see if we can catch a couple of minutes with manager Mike Cook. Yeah. Mike, what do you make of that, mate? The final whistle, frustrating end to a game. Late heartbreak for town again. Yes, yeah, I think we've got to work on our shooting. I think we had enough chances there to win that four or five. So very disappointing just to concede in that last minute. But um, I think they've, you know, they've done well. Most of the game, all the training sessions have been great. Just haven't been uh, quite clinical enough today, to be honest. Defensively, a lot tighter today, obviously, off the back of the last couple of games where there's been sort of like, you know, four goal gaps. Very, very different kettle of fish today. They look pretty secure and ultimately a scrappy goal to concede, but much improved defensive performance. Are you happy with that? Yeah, I am. I mean, the only thing I would say is, uh, you know, Exeter last week, top of the league, absolutely flying, really, really good team. Probably my favourites to go up, I would have said, uh, at the beginning of the season. So I don't don't think there's any disgrace losing to them for, but these today was what we were thinking of three points. So not to get those three points is, uh, yeah, it's a bit disappointing. Nonetheless, rot stops you, and we move on. So um, a yeah. couple of games left this season. Progress today, were there any signs of progress? Anything in particular you like the look of? Yeah, definitely. We're just starting to pass it a little bit better. Uh, it helps being on the Astro turf as well because that entertains that. But overall, I've got to be really pleased with them. It was just that last sort of five minutes keeping the ball out and uh, we didn't quite do that today. All right, Mike. Thanks ever so much, mate. All the very right. best. Thanks, Helen. Cheers now. We're going to try and try and get a couple try and get a couple of minutes with Town's number nine, Annie Colston. Annie, you've got a couple of minutes for us. How was that for you? Hard work? Hard work. Hard, hard break at the end. Yeah, I know. I just don't feel like... I don't know, it was a, a lot of running, not a lot of reward, I think. Mm. Just from the way it went, like, it just didn't fall our way sometimes. We're getting in good positions, but there was just blocking of a shot. It's just a tough one, but I don't feel like we deserve the draw. We deserve the, the three points, but it's just the way it goes sometimes. Talk, talking to the manager, Mike Cook, at the end there, you've managed to, you've rattled the woodwork, uh, you ladies, today, two or three occasions. You've, yeah. you've asked lots of questions. You always looked potentially susceptible on the break, and... And so it proved at the end there, unfortunately, Emily couldn't quite keep that one out at the yeah. end and they, they bundled one home for an equaliser. Been the story of recent weeks, hasn't it, for you? Yeah, I feel like it's every team we play, they're just clinical with their chances. I feel like even if they get one, two chances in the game, they seem to put them away, whereas we can have like 15, 16 chances and we, we're not putting them away. So sometimes it just comes, comes to punish us, even if we are the better team on the day. We've got to take our chances and score goals. That's how you're going to win the game. Well... Onwards and upwards, a couple of games left this season. Mm -hmm. Still plenty to play for, Annie. So, I know you've not revealed your goals target. Are you any closer to it? After today, you're going to say no, no. but still an opportunity no, in the remaining after. games to break it. I think after the last three games, I'm no closer to where we uh, set the target. But, Mom. you know, I'll still push on for it and just see how close I can get to it. Which nice hopefully one. Hopefully, it'll be close. Thank you, Annie. I Lovely know, talking you. to you and Thank Nipper. You. We're going to try and get a word with... We're going to try and get a word with the skipper. How are we, Alice? How was that for you? Frustrating ending to a hard-fought game. Um, what was your take from that? What do you take away from a game like that? Take away the girls' work ethic. Just the, the desire to want to get a goal even like two minutes to the end. Like Obviously, we've got a new manager, so new tactics, but everyone working together, trying to get the tactics right. And ultimately, again, just one little turned-off moment where we probably should have pressed the ball and we didn't. And they've capitalised, which is just very frustrating because we were dominant the whole game. We had, They didn't really create much. We stopped everything, but again, one marginal thing and they've got a goal. It's just frustrating. Talent, I mean, they had talent, didn't they? Pulse his head in certain positions and um, I think from, certainly from a from a commentary and, and, a, and a fan's perspective, um, we were saying that it was just, you girls couldn't afford to switch off um, for a second, really. And it was just a little bit unfortunate the way the game go the goal came about at the end there, Alice. What was your view from a defensive point of view? From a defensive point of view, I think we should have gone to our driver. The girls have taken her out and got a penalty than let her have a shot. So for me, it's just a little bit frustrating, but it's something that we take on board and learn from. The last couple of games, they've been trying to put it to the back post in school. But obviously, they didn't manage to do that, so I'm I'm happy that we had, that didn't happen today. But obviously, just uh, one marginal little small error where we turned off, where like you said, we couldn't have turned off. The girls had all the players that had talent. They they had a man mark the whole game. They didn't create much, but again, just nicked it at the end, which is just highly frustrating. Well, 
we wish you all the best. Alice, a couple of games left this season. What do you feel that you're playing for personally? And indeed, what do you think the team are playing for in the remaining two games, apart from the obvious points? <laughs> I think we're just playing for pride, for to try and get it right for the new manager, trying to play his way, trying to um, involve everyone and create create opportunities for the girls and show, showcase their talent to show the new supporters that are coming in what we're made of and that's hopefully what we can get out, get by the end of the last two games. Well, Skip, thanks for your time. We wish you all the very, very best for the remaining two games of this season and we are hopeful that we will be getting... Oh, you're all being, oh, you're all being, you're all being told off, right? They've all got to scuttle off. So, we'll, we'll have our final word. We'll have our final word with, uh, with Jen Gray. Jen, um, what do you make of that? Lots of frustration from the skipper there. Lots of frustration from Annie. Yeah. Um, they're, they're all, they're all. I think they're all going to be uh, dragged in and read the riot acts. I think <laughs> Mike, Mike seemed to be kind of pleased with certain aspects, like trying to improve their passing game. But I mean, listen from a from a supporter's point of view, it was um, it, it was a tough watch. It was it was an agricultural watch, wasn't it? And I, I don't know how much of that was down to us and attempting to change style and be a little bit more direct. Or whether that was the opposition dragging us down. What was your take? Yeah, I, I think that it's a really disappointing result. Um, I think all of the girls are going to go away from today not happy with sort of what we put out there. Um, obviously, I, th- I, th- I think you know going direct it did work for us at times. We got in there, we got in their box, we had goal scoring opportunities, we just couldn't convert. And I think we just we let ourselves down with one mistake at the back, which we conceded from. Um, I think overall it, it's not a terrible performance, um, but I think the girls will be very disappointed to go away without three points today. Oh, well, a frustrating afternoon at Foundation Park for us. Jen, it's been an absolute treat. Thank you for joining us and giving us so much of your time this afternoon. Um, you don't disappoint. You're, you're brilliant company and we're really, really grateful for all your time. Ellis, likewise for you, mate. Thank you ever so much for so much of your time. Well, it's always, always a pleasure being here in <laughs> person. Um, no, no, no. You're very, very welcome. And um, I think um, so to round up the um, final score here at Foundation Park is Swindon Town Women 1, Portis Head Women uh, won a late heartbreak once again for Swindon Town women, uh, this time in the shadow of the county ground. Um, Emerson Evans' um, early uh, go- early strike, which was fumbled in by the uh, Portis Head goalkeeper, was equalised at the death pretty much uh, by the Portis Head, um, uh, lively Portis Head right winger, um, who was able to follow up a fine Emily McGrogan low save to her left-hand side and bundle it across the line. Um, Nonetheless, the first point on the board for new manager Mike Cook, who we spoke to exclusively at the start of this show. Um, and he was, uh, whilst there were concerns about the team shooting boots today, um, Mike certainly feels that there are enough green shoots uh, that the supporters should be going home today with a smile on their face. In front of a crowd of what we estimate to be, whilst it was uh, declared as 84 shortly after kickoff, um, the final supporter numbers looked more along the lines of 150, possibly pushing 200. So I don't think any records have been broken today. Um, but um, certainly um, at the death, um, there were a few broken hearts amongst the Swindon Town faithful. Listen, it's been an absolute pleasure bringing you commentary of Swindon Town women uh, versus Portishead today uh, to cap a long weekend of um, uh, football involvement from the Sir Tom Broadbent Lounge on the County Ground Estate, uh, following on from the men's nil-nil draw at the County Ground yesterday. So final score here at Foundation Park, Swindon Town women won, Portishead won. I'm Hannahs. It's been an absolute pleasure hosting you tonight, or today rather. And we'll catch up with you on Wednesday night when there will no doubt be a few more lovely surprises from ourselves for you wonderful Swindon Town folk. Take good care of yourselves. Catch you again.